The undefeated Sooners battle to a 10-point win on the road at Kansas State seven weeks ago. Tonight, for the Wildcats, a chance for redemption. It's the Dr. Pepper Big 12 Championship. And for the first time ever, it brings us outdoors. Arrowhead Stadium in Kansas City, Missouri, and the matchup, the top-ranked and undefeated Sooners of Oklahoma against the number seven Wildcats of Kansas State. Hi again, everybody. I'm Brad Nessler, and welcome to Kansas City. You know, in an exciting and sometimes quirky college football season, it seems pretty fitting that after 1,271 games in Division 1A, the very last game before the bowl season has so much at stake. And the math is pretty simple. Oklahoma wins. They go to the Orange. Bowl to play for the national championship. If Kansas State can win, they'll be in the BCS in the Fiesta Bowl. My partner, as always, is Bob Greasy. Bob, if this was a movie for Oklahoma, they'd call it the Hunt for Red October. They went through that stretch where they were beating everybody up and scoring 45 points a game. Where's their offense been the last three weeks? Well, there's no way they could have continued the pace that they were on the first seven or eight weeks of the season. Secondly, I think a lot of teams started showing some respect for the spread offense and for Josh Heupel. They started not pressuring him so much and started playing some soft zones. While it happens in the National Football League that you can play a team twice in a season and sometimes more, very rarely does that happen in college football. Here's a rematch, and here's Bill Snyder with a week off last week, two weeks to prepare for the game. And I think in a situation like this, the loser has an advantage in the rematch, and I think definitely a team that has two weeks to prepare, both physically and mentally, has the advantage in this ballgame. All right, we've talked a little about the offense and the defense. The all-important special teams will play a role tonight. With more on that, third man in our crew, Lynn Swan. Swanee? Thank you, Brad. You mentioned 1,271 games. Let's condense it even further. Further. This ball game could come down to one punt or one punt return. These two teams have been phenomenal. If you look at this, the records combined, they've blocked six punts, they've had six punts blocked, and they returned five for touchdowns. And they have young men with speed to burn. For Kansas State, Aaron Lockett, he is unbelievable, averaging over 21 yards every time he catches a ball on a punt. And if you look at T.J. Thatcher, he's returned two for touchdown. He is a burner. Brad, these returners will have one motto in the game tonight, and that will be make something happen and make something happen fast. And, Swanee, I know you know better than anybody, the place is rocking, and if we needed any more drama, will the Heisman Trophy pass through Kansas City tonight? Josh Heupel might have some say in that. Arrowhead is alive on a cool night in Kansas City. And Lynn Swan is with Bob Stoops on a 32-degree night. Swanee? Thank you, Brad. Coach Stoops. You guys have done great. People have told you what a great season is, but does everything hinge on this one game? Well, for us it does. We're not going to accept any satisfaction until after this football game. Uh, we're going to go after this game, and uh, and those other 11 games, you can let them go. It's all riding on this one game. It's a great atmosphere, isn't it? It's a great atmosphere. Do you have to fight the feeling to be a little bit more conservative in a big ball game like this because so much is on the line? Not at all. We're going after it. We don't have anything on the line. That's, right. a, that's the attitude. That's right. Right? Bill Snyder has never coached against a number one ranked team, but Kansas State as a team is 0 for 8 against number one ranked teams. And he's 5 and 5 against Oklahoma. Tim Duncan's got it teed up as Oklahoma won the toss and deferred. And back deep for Kansas State, Aaron Lockett. And he can, as Swanee said, make a big play in a hurry. This one's going to bounce to the eight yard line of Terrence Newman. And Newman. Comes near side, found a little bit of room and got out with a flag flying in to about the 28-yard line. And we may have an illegal block on the opening kickoff. Our referees, Randy Crystal. Not the way that no. Kansas hope. State wanted to start things off. And you hope this is not a sign of things to come. Right. It's a holding call. And for Kansas State this year, the second most penalized team in school history. Jonathan Beasley will bring him out. There's his numbers, an even 50%, 16 passing touchdowns, and tied with his teammate, Josh Gobey, for the Big 12 lead in rushing touchdowns, also with 16. Bobby's not a polished passer, but he gets the job done pretty well. He's versatile. He gets around and uh, not a very accurate passer. He goes for the big plays, averaging 17 and a half yards per completion. 
So they'll have to work with the penalty from their own 14-yard line. They shift into an eye backfield. With Scobie the tail from the 14. And he'll get the call. Got two, maybe three. Ran right into Ryan Fisher. Let's take a look at the Dr. Pepper starting lineups. Up front, the big eaters for Kansas State. Stevenson, E.B. Cummins is an all-Big 12 performer. Robertson and Barnett. Scobie the tailback with Rock Cartwright, his lead man. Myers the tight end, and Morgan and Lockett can change a game in the blink of an eye. Second down of seven. Just underway in a noisy Arrowhead Stadium. And there's Quincy Morgan. On the ground, a Cartwright. And the Rock. Got it out to about the 24-yard line. He might have gotten a first down with that last little push defensively for Oklahoma. Heineke, Fisher, all-conference. Holliman and Callens. The linebacking core is about as good as it comes. Stephan Marshall, who saved some games, and Rocky Kalmus is a Butkus finalist. And the secondary looks like this. Thompson, Thatcher with eight interceptions. Williams might be the best strong safety in the league, and Derek Strait as well back there. In the back four, and that's J.T. Thatcher. Eight interceptions on the season, ties a school record. A big play written all over Thatcher. What is he ever? But Cartwright, his extra effort got him a first down just inside the 25-yard line. Play action. Beasley wants it all. Going long. We're going to have an incompletion and no penalty marker. Aaron Lockett's looking all over the field as Michael Thompson was with him stride for stride. The incident... They incidentally got their feet tangled up, apparently. No penalty marker. Third play of the game. Play action. Lockett goes deep. Little shove there by Thompson, oh 19. And the ball was in the air, so they could have been called. But, uh, so, you know, early in the ball game, I think they're going to let them play a little bit. So it brings up second down at 10. Lockett is not very big. He's only 5'7 and 165, yeah. so any little push and he's going down. And that's with marbles in his pockets. <laughs> not very big. David Allen splits out as a third wide out of the backfield. And here's a quarterback draw on Beasley. And Beasley banging his way for some positive yards. The ball is loose. Oklahoma says they've got it. They do. And the Sooner fans on their feet for Roy Williams. Well, the Sooners were going after the ball. He's a right-handed quarterback carrying it in his left hand. That's Marshall, I think, that pulled it out. There it is on the ground. Nobody knows it's out. Marshall knows it's out. And Rocky Kalmus pointing in the Sooners' direction. 32 takeaways for the defense on the year. That's almost three a game for the Sooners. Let's see if Oklahoma can take advantage of the turnover. They might try to do it on one play. Hypo play action goes downtown. has got him inside the five. Andre Wolfolk, and it's first and goal, Oklahoma. Wolfolk, the wide receiver, goes to the post immediately. Single coverage out here. Nobody in the middle of the field. See, there's nobody down here in the middle. Could have thrown the ball more to the inside. It may have been a touchdown if he's led him across the field. 23-yard pickup, and it's first and goal. Griffin dives maybe to the two. Quentin Griffin, the ball carrier. Josh Heupel, who threw a strike on his first pass, 18 touchdowns, almost 3,200 yards, and the Big 12 Offensive Player of the Year. Hasn't lost a game this year. I mean, when you stop to think where Oklahoma started, they started at 20th in, in the nation and moved them up, beat the number one team, Nebraska, Kansas State number two, all on his shoulders. Griffin, 16 rushing touchdowns on the year. They're showing blitz, and whistles will help play here as Heifel started to roll out with it. Well, anytime you see those guys up there, and then one of the offensive linemen will normally budge a little bit when they see the linebacker inside blitzing. Part of the snap. Ball start on the offense. Ball start, Oklahoma.
Five stoops, his team with an opportunity here after the fumble recovery to take the early advantage. But now they're backed up outside the five-yard line at second and goal at the seven. Three wideouts will trot out to the near side. And Trent Smith, the tight end, up to the top of your screen. Heifel from the gun. The quick throw to his tight end. He caught it on the second try. He's got Good it at the one-yard line. Trent Smith is a tight end, but he's 6'5 and 227. They almost treat him like a tall wide receiver. They split him out to the uh, wide side, almost like a wide receiver would be, and they throw the slant to him. Knocks it down, and then he gets a fortunate bounce. It's on the one-yard line. He caught it twice. Seth Littrell, the fullback, is a single setback. Third and goal at the one. It's Heifel trying to do it himself. He didn't get it the first time. They're still unpiling bodies and no word from the officials. He didn't get in. It's fourth and goal. I think this is a situation where you're going to go for it. You got a break on the on the uh, on the uh, turnover. You're down on the one yard line. Even if you don't make it, you leave them on the one yard line. Exactly. You leave them 99 and a half away. Quentin Griffin trots back in. He's not the biggest back in the world, but he can smell the end zone. He's done it 16 times this year. And he scored six times earlier this year in one game against Texas. They'll spread him out. Shotgun. Fourth and goal. Griffin didn't get there. Thought of hey, he's got him. Big goal line stand for Kansas State. Huge. Griffin on a quick opening draw to the shotgun, couldn't get there. Bill Bennett, the defensive coordinator, blitzes Kazar, number 54. That disrupts the timing and allows the other Wildcats to get there. What a big stop. Kansas State on offense when we come back. Josh Heupel threw two strikes on that drive, but they come up short on fourth and goal. Bob Stoops made the decision to go for the touchdown. They were inside the one, and Kansas State came up with a huge goal line stand. So now they take over in the shadow of their own goal post, and Scobie is leveled by Roy Williams. Let's go back to that goal line stand, Bob. Yeah, great play by Kansas State. A blitz. Kazar, the linebacker right here, is going to shoot into the gap. Fata Fahey right here, the defensive tackle. Watch these two guys play. Kazar disrupts it. Fata Fahey, 75, gets around his man. And Yates, number 12, gets in there and no chance. What you need in that situation is a big fullback leading your tailback. There's part of the emotional inspiration on that defense. Fata Fahey has made some big plays all year long. Here's a quick throw out to Morgan. And Morgan kneeled down, I believe, when he made that catch. Yeah. I think his knee touched. Yeah, it was a low throw, and he had to go down to make sure he caught it, and the knee was on the ground. Quincy Morgan, that's his 101st career catch. And he's got the single season receiving record over 1,100 yards. Closing in on Kevin Lockett's touchdown mark. And, of course, Kevin's little brother, Aaron, already playing in this game. And has made a catch. It's a third down and seven. And there's Lockett. To Kansas State, you got to be careful throwing the ball from down in this area. Here comes a blitz. Beasley's in trouble. Got rid of it. Batted in the air. Nobody could get there. Torrance Marshall, the linebacker, got his hand on it. Torrance Marshall has made himself huge in this game already. Only two defensive possessions. Once he stripped the ball loose and caused a fumble. Secondly, now he's on a blitz. Times his jump properly and knocks the ball away. Not a nice spot to have to punt from either. You got to have a perfect snap. And JT Thatcher waits at midfield. Normally you want 14 yards for your punter. They're stretching that limit right now. Snaps clean. Return, no block. High kick, but short, very short. Thatcher will take the fair catch at the 38-yard line. So, again, great field position for Oklahoma after just a 33-yard punt. 
And Josh Heupel will have his second chance to try to get the Sooners down in the end zone. Down here, is it? No score here in the first quarter. The starting field position's been all Oklahoma. Second possession for them. They work from the 38. Heupel going deep. Man's out there. Just overshot Wolfolk, who we hooked up with for 23 yards on the first series. Let's check our Dr. Pepper starting lineups. Here's the big ones up front. Romero, Duncan, Burcham, and all Big 12 performer Skinner and Kempenick. Savage and Fagan, Wolfolk and Norman, the four wideouts that'll be rotated, and Quentin Griffin, the starting tailback. And Quentin Griffin can catch the ball, too. He's a tailback with 38 catches on the year. And he's got exactly the same amount of yardage as Scobie Here for come. Kansas State. Here comes the blitz. They'll try it again. Same play. Incomplete. Nice coverage. Dashad Carter stayed right there. Yeah, Kansas State very fortunate there. A blitz on, single coverage down there. Carter didn't see it. Wolfhawk did, but he didn't come down with it. I think if Josh gets a little more on that pass, it might be a touchdown, Bob. He, he underthrew to, him a little he did, bit. He did, and he, he saw it. Carter did not see it, but did a nice job of breaking it up. He said he's coming back for something. Now he looks back late. Good job by the defender. Josh has four, thrown four passes, three toward Wolfolk. They're showing blitz again. Let's see if they bring it on third and ten. Now the tight end, Smith, comes in tighter for some protection. There's the linebackers up there. There They're they coming. come. Heifel, plenty of time. Fires complete. Inside the 25, and it's Damian Mackey, and it's a first down Oklahoma. When you got that kind of time with that kind of heat coming, Greece has got to be somebody open. Well, you know, they did a little blitz, but it was a zone blitz. They dropped a lot of guys back. He didn't have the center of the field open. It's a nice wrinkle by Kansas State, but give uh, Heupel credit. He found the open guy. Comes up with a big pass, pass play on third and 10, and that's first down at the 24. Kansas State has had two weeks to prepare and has thrown some new things. All 11 guys up here within five yards of the line of scrimmage. They almost jumped offside. And now high pull to go to work again. Throws wide open man, threw it behind Wolfolk. That would have been a touchdown. Defensively for Kansas State, here's how they look. Bysel and Robinson. Fadafehi, we've seen make a big play already, and Chris Johnson leads them in sacks. A couple of linebackers. Kazar's back in there after being injured, and Lieber is one of the leaders defensively. They'll play a lot of defensive backs, as you might guess. Butler, McGraw, Cooper, Tyler's the nickel, Carter the corner, and Proctor will play in dime situations. And they're being very aggressive. None of the soft zone stuff. Nope. Three wideouts to the left side for Heifel. He's looking the other way, though, and he's flushed. Throws to Norman, who made a great catch out in front of him, and the big fella gets it down, and he might have a first down at the 14-yard line. You know, Heifel is so good. He does a lot of good qualities and a lot of nice things, one of which is avoiding him. Watch his feet. He doesn't, he doesn't try and bring the ball down and run. He just slides around, buys some time, and then gets the ball to a receiver. This one's close enough to look at. Norman is one wicked target because he's 230 pounds on a 6'2 frame, and he used that physicality to get where he got. Now we'll just see about the spot. A little bit short. About a foot short. Josh Heupel, that was the most given up by Kansas State in the air all year. He was near perfect, 78%, 374 and two, and he ran for one. And this is not chopped liver they're going against either. <laughs> Kansas State, second best defense in the nation. They only give up 168 yards through the air on the average. Heupel already tonight, Bob, in this first quarter looks more like he did in October than he has in the last three weeks. Yeah, and they're giving him some shots. There's some single coverage downfield. They've just had good coverage. Question going in was they were going to be soft zones or were they going to come after him? They've done pretty much what their defense.
offensive scheme's been all along. Third down in the foot. Look at this. Here they come again. Eiffel changing things up. The linebacker right here. Linebacker's up. He'll give it to Griffin. He's hitting the backfield again. This time it's Ben Lieber, the defensive captain. Boy, they're coming up with big plays when they need them. Lieber is a junior, and he's the captain, and he just came in and just stuffed it. This defensive line is very good and very aggressive for Kansas State. So this time, Bob Stoops says, let's try to take the three. Tim Duncan will come out. Duncan on the year, 11 out of 19. Going to try a 32-yard field goal. Smack in the middle of the field. And our scoreless tie is broken. The Sooners with great field position still could only muster a field goal. They wanted more, but they do lead by three. Seven sixteen left in the first quarter. Only a 23-yard drive. A couple of minutes. 156 actually to elapse. Duncan's field goals put Oklahoma in front. Aaron Lockett, one of the fine return men in not just the Big 12, but the country, waiting on Duncan's kickoff. Lockett's got a beat on it right at the goal line. Aaron Lockett, great speed. Nice open field tackle at the 25-yard line. Savage down there to make the stop on the special teams. All right, Jonathan Beasley, very smart. Knows the offense inside and out. Versatile, can run, get outside the pocket, scram. More dangerous outside the pocket and looks for the big play and sometimes almost to a fault. And he'll call his own number if there's a check off at the line as far as running the ball. Yes, he will. He'll look around and he'll, a lot of times he'll check. It'll be his own number and a lot of times it'll be the option. First down at the 25. Morgan in motion toward the ball, but it's... The tailback, Scobie, short gain, got a couple. Roy Williams comes up again. Boy, he will hit you, and he gets there from that safety spot in a hurry. It's the best field position that Kansas State has had. They've started their first two drives on the 14, their own, own 14, and their own two. They got a couple on that one. Second down and eight. David Allen now has checked back in, in that tailback spot. And he'll flank out to the left side as he did the last time he came into the lineup. Check it off. And it'll be a draw play to the fullback. And Pat White's got a first down. Penalty marker. Nope, it's not a penalty marker. Looked like a flag flying in. And they're saying Oklahoma has recovered the ball, but they haven't. Cartwright is a real surprise. The fullback, the starting fullback, Lazatich, out for the year with concussions. This kid is not even in the, the, in the media guide. He fumbles that Boy, ball and is fortunate that his teammate got it back. It landed right between his knees, which helped the cause. He squeezed a little bit, and then he got help from his friends. Well, he's not very big. He's only 5'8", 240 pounds, but he's a fourth-string fullback at the beginning of the season. Just barely got here in time for spring practice, or fall practice, excuse me. Got here in late July. And a first down at the 36, so Kansas State's got a little room to work. Beasley comes up firing to Morgan. Morgan spins his way. Near the 44, pickup of about eight. Michael Thompson made the tackle. Experienced history through the eyes of the combat photographers who chronicled it. From executive Bruce and Steven Spielberg comes Shooting War, hosted by Tom Hanks, Thursday at 9, 8 Central, right here on ABC. Trust me, folks, it's colder than those guys who are making it look out here. <laughs> but it's not bad on the field. I was down there before, and uh, it's not going to affect the play on the field and it's a lot better than it was last night when we had snow and wind and every other thing nice clear night so far and a packed house at Arrowhead draw play again again they get the first down out to midfield goes David Allen as Allen slides his way for six and Fisher makes the tackle let's check in with Swanee well, Brad, we're talking about K-State and how they love the big play. Let's compare their wide receivers to the Oklahoma wide receivers, and you'll see the difference in the numbers. 13 players from both sides have caught the ball. But look at that. 
seven 20 plus catches for OU, but for K-State only two and you go down the line. And that tells the story. Keep also in mind that Quincy has 13 touchdowns while it takes four receivers for Oklahoma to get to 14. Well, they just drilled one to Morgan. The ball came loose. They're going to say incomplete. Thompson separated him from the catch. That was close. This ball is thrown too late. He was open for a long time. Morgan at the top of your screen is going to run a little slant. Hit him with it right now. He waits too long. Gets him too far. That gives the, the defensive back. Is that Thompson, 19? Knocks it out. Perfect timing on the hit by Thompson. And it's second and 10 from midfield. Yeah, but you've got to get the ball to Quincy Morgan and Aaron Lockett. And again, Beasley trying to be heard over the crowd, as are his running backs. And a roll this time to throw. Fires incomplete in the dirt, intended for Lockett. Actually, the closest person there was Ate Jones. Third and ten. Bob and Brad, we're looking at third and ten, and by all rights, it should not be that because Quincy Morgan should have hung on to that particular pass. One of the things that's plagued this football team and, and a number of the receivers is that they're not very consistent when it comes to catching the ball. The last time these two teams made a uh, met, if the receivers hadn't dropped so many passes, the outcome might have been very different. Well, you're right about that, Swanee. They dropped a bundle, both those guys. Martez Wesley joins the group as a third wideout. Seventh play of the Kansas State drive in Oklahoma show and blitz. They'll come with it. Beasley's in trouble over the middle, incomplete. Intended for Lockett. Kalmus was in deep coverage from his linebacker spot. It was Corey Callens bringing the smoke. Yeah, nobody was open. Only a three-man route downfield, and everybody had a crimson shirt right next to him. Bill Snyder says, wait a minute now, didn't that guy push off? Here's a guy that is second in the Big 12 in punt returns. The only reason he's second is because Aaron Lockett on the other team's number one. Brown to punt. Thatcher had a 93-yard kick return in the first game against Kansas State. He's going to clear everybody out of the way, or try to. And he'll just have to let this bounce down inside the 15-yard line. Rolls dead at about the 13. Good punt, good coverage. And it'll be Oklahoma offensively after we remind you the college football and ABC sports is brought to you by Dr. Pepper and your local Dr. Pepper bottler. Dr. Pepper makes the world taste better. Ford F-Series, the best-selling trucks are built Ford Tough. Dell and Budweiser with a crisp, clean, refreshing taste you'll find in no other beer. And I got a feeling, and I'm right, those are Budweiser's. <laughs> There's a few of those that have been consumed today in the parking lot of Arrowhead. Those guys obviously got a little antifreeze going, too. They've been here all afternoon. Yep. The crowd got here early. Heifel from the gun on first down. Draw play. Going nowhere. Nice job defensively again. Robinson's there. So's Chris Johnson. I'll tell you what, I've never, you know, we do games all around the country. This defensive line, they have three defensive linemen that are in the top four on the team in tackles. We don't see that anywhere. Ever. We always see defensive linemen just taking up blocks, and then the linebackers and defensive backs come in to make the plays. And they're the top 15 in four major categories in the national rankings. You saw three of them there, including number two overall. Second down at 12 after they lost two on the draw play. Heifel pump fakes, wants to go long. Will for Wolfo. It's intercepted. Picked off by Dashad Carter. They went to the well one time too many. Great coverage by Carter. They tried that play three or four times already, Bob, and we're still in the first quarter. Well, they have, and this was just single coverage. You see him do a little pump. Carter never went for the pump, was playing the deep route all the way. Good coverage. That's his fifth interception of the year and his 13th of his career. That's just beautiful defense. Kansas State now, great opportunity. Their best starting field position, and it's Scobie on a sweep. Scobie got a couple. 
And at about the 41-yard line, Kalmus knocked him off his pins. Talking to Ron Hudson yesterday, offensive coordinator for Kansas State, says we've got to get the running game going. That's why they're making such a, an effort to get it going. We cannot put the game in the hands of Jonathan Beasley. we got to give him some help. There's Heifel's numbers early. For Josh, that's his 12th interception against 18 touchdown passes. Second down and eight. Just outside the OU 40. And it's Cartwright, and he's the guy that's getting the running game going, quite frankly. He's doing a pretty good job of it. So he's going to be about three yards shy of a first down. And our first and ten's presented by Pacific Life. So you see where they have to get with a third down coming up. Our line of gold is at about the 33-yard line. Line of scrimmage is the 36, and we've got 2.20 left first quarter. 3-0 Oklahoma on a Duncan field goal. Lockett in motion. He'll take it on an end around. Lockett with a lead blocker in Scobie, but he didn't get there. Torrance Marshall collared him over there before he got to the stick. You can tell which team had a week off to prepare, had two weeks really, because uh, Kansas State is coming out with some new things, both offensively and defensively. Number 10, Torrance Marshall, sideline to sideline, making the plays, wow. been making them all year long. And with he and Calmus together, that's something special. 10 and 20. And it's fourth down, and Kansas State's got its offense out there, and it's staying out there. They're kind of in Neverland. They're too far out for a kick. They don't want to waste a punt here at the 35. You don't get many trips here. Fourth down and two. So both teams. Now they're going to try a quick kick. And a pooch punt. Not a bad job either by Beasley. It's a beauty. And it's saved at the three-yard line. He was practicing that in pregame. Usually the coaches from both sides are looking at the other teams. They always have a coach watching what the other team's doing. Nice job, Jonathan Beasley, low pooch punt. That's the advantage, the advantage of not showing the punt is that the other team doesn't put somebody back there to catch it. Right. They tried to get a timeout call. Torrance Marshall saw it coming. He couldn't get a timeout called in time. And then everybody had to clear the area, and it rolls dead oh, down at the three-yard line. That is really good. That's beautiful. That's good football. So, as Kansas State was earlier, Oklahoma buried in its own end. And Heupel in the end zone from the gun. Josh swings it out to Griffin, who somehow made a shoestring catch and got him a little bit of work, room to work out near the nine-yard line. Pickup of six. Terry Pierce made the stop, and we're under a minute in the quarter. Josh kind of short-armed that one. Yeah, he did. That was a good catch. Griffin had to take it off his shoe tops. And like second down and four. This is not any easy job going up against this defense. And can't, if, you're, if you were wondering what Kansas State was going to do defensively, were they going to do what the last three defenses did, place off zones? The answer is no. They are up there. They are pressuring. They are mixing some of their coverage defensively, and here they come. Boy, they timed that one beautifully. The ball is tipped, and it's in the air, and it's intercepted. The Wildcats have it at the 11. On the deflection of the defensive lineman's got a dream, and Heifel's thrown two interceptions. Trying to hit the little slant route. The ball got there. The receiver wasn't. Uh, who was trying to catch it? Fagan. The ball hits Fagan. He just doesn't keep his eyes on it. So an Oklahoma native, Devane Robinson, comes up with a huge play from his defensive tackle spot. And now at the 11-yard line, it's Kansas State, first and 10. Lock it again in motion. They fake the end around, and now they go with a tight end. Meyer, and he keeps it around the left end. <laughs> the last two plays by Kansas State have been reverses. One to lock it, one to the tight end, Meyer. That time they had Lockett come in motion again as though they were going to give it to him, and they give it to Meyer instead, the tight end around the left side, and that's going to expire quarter number one. A few Ooh. surprises. 
A few big plays, some goal line stands and two interceptions. But it's OU at the end of one by three. You're watching the Dr. Pepper Big 12 Championship on ABC Sports. Set to start the second quarter, 3-0 Oklahoma. And the Dr. Pepper first quarter statistics, Kansas State with all the rushing yards, OU still in the negative there. And two turnovers, two interceptions of Heupel, and one fumble by Kansas State. Yeah, we've had three turnovers in the first quarter, and that's why coaches always talk about turnovers. Allen the tailback now. Here's a little bit of keeper by Beasley, and he weaves his way. He's not fast and he's not fancy, but he seems to have a knack for doing it on the ground, his 17th rushing touchdown of the year. He likes to call his own number inside the 20-yard line, inside the 15. A lot of touchdowns, as Brad just said, 17 rushing touchdowns. Jamie Ream has hit 32 straight extra points. He's hit 33 straight extra points. Kansas State in front, 7 to 3. They took advantage of the interception. Well, the defense, the defense set up, set up the score. The, the aggressive pressure defense. Here they are, right here. Eight guys right here will come. Three guys out on the outside to cover the three guys. Pressure defense is what Kansas State does best. It's deflected in the air. They're putting not pressure on the Heifel, not giving him much time. Inside the 15, that's a quarterback keep all the way. Nothing fancy, not very fast, not very shifty, but he knows where the end zone is. He's just a tough, good football player right here. He doesn't have the passing skills of the Josh Heifel, but he, he knows how to play the game. There was a personal foul on Michael Thompson on the extra point on Jamie Ream, the kicker. Jonathan Beasley, effective so far on the ground more than through the air. He'll take that 17th touchdown. He was tied with his backfield mate, Scobie, with 16, so he's got the lead now. A lot of football left, 7-3. Kansas State, so they only have to go 11 yards in two plays. 29 seconds is the scoring drive to take the lead. What Heupel is thinking right now is the last three weeks, everybody has been laying off, playing zone, soft zones, and not coming after me. Everybody's been talking about that. Now you come against Kansas State, they're doing just the opposite of the last three weeks. They're putting pressure on him. He's taking some shots downfield. The coverage has been there. And that personal foul will probably take any kind of return out of this because Reem's got enough leg that kicking off from midfield, he might knock this one right into the crowd somewhere. Or you may watch out for an onside kick because if you do an onside kick and you don't get it, you're 15 yards further downfield Good point. because of the penalty. So Reem, the senior from Wichita, has got it teed up. And Oklahoma is, only has five guys up there. They're going to kick it high. Five yards in the end zone, won't be returned. So Oklahoma will take over and work from the 20. Our courtyard by Marriott moment this week takes us back to classic moments in the short four-year history of the Big 12 championship. 96, Tom, Horn, Tom Osborne's Cornhusker is less than three minutes away from a championship. That big play by Texas pulled an upset. And then Kansas State squandered a 15-point fourth quarter lead. Saw their perfect season go down the tubes as Sir Parker scampered in with that pass in the second overtime with some of the moments but those were indoors and for the first time outside on a crisp clear night Kansas City we got a good game going 11 guys up near the line of scrimmage Savage on an end around nowhere to go nice play defensively by Beisel and John McGraw from the secondary we talk about field position. Oklahoma, last two possessions, started inside their 15 both times. Both of them ended in interceptions, and they were fortunate that they only are down 7-3. to three. 
Heifel now will work from the shotgun. He's five out of ten. And he faces second down and nine. From the 21. Straight rush here. He throws incomplete intended for Wolfolk. And it'll be third and long. And Heifel getting some help from his offensive lineman. Lynn. Well, Brad, you know, we have to point out three turnovers in this ball game, and whenever you get in ball games like this, you have to take advantage of opportunities. Of the three turnovers, it was only Kansas State able to take advantage of it and get the ball into the end zone. When we get to the end of this ball game, Oklahoma is going to look back on this and say, okay, we missed at least one prime opportunity in this ball game, and that could be the difference. You're right, Lenny, but the good thing is it's early in the game, and both teams have three quarters to recover. Third down and nine. Heifel stands in, waits, flares it out to Griffin, and Griffin's pasted. It. It's incomplete anyway, but Ben Lieber let him know he was there. He let him know, and he'll remember that the rest of the game. And it's three and out, Oklahoma. The defense of Kansas State is taking over this game. Kansas State, as a defensive team this year, 45% of the time have not even allowed a first down by the opposition on their total possessions this year. So it's a three and out here in this case for Oklahoma. Yeah, look out here. You're punting deep in your own territory. Lockett's going to be running downhill on your side of the field. Oh, they almost got to the kick. It'll bounce in front of Lockett. He'll have to let it go. They got very close to blocking that punt. And it's Bryce Libel, who's done it four times in his career, almost had another one there. Jonathan Beasley in Kansas State on offense with a 7-3 lead when we come back. Kansas State leading 7-3. They've got the ball back. Josh Heupel's been intercepted twice. Beasley hasn't done much through the air, but he did score the Kansas State touchdown on the ground. And now good field position again for the Wildcats from their own 38-yard line. Here's Cartwright. And Cartwright's got seven more, and that fullback spot's been getting the work done for him. Let's go back to the punt. We talked about all the punts that have been blocked. Watch Libel right here. He's on the outside. He's going to loop to the inside. Watch the play of the lineman. They're going to block to the right. The red shirt block right. And there's Libel right there up the middle. That was their best shot. They've worked all week on that and almost got it done. Four career block punch, two this year. Cartwright again. This time, he's wearing Ryan Fisher around his pads, and he's going to be short of the first down by about a yard. Fisher, a guy that made the All-Big 12 team and doesn't have impressive statistics, but he's appreciated by everybody around the conference. Well, he's, he's like a fire plug. He's 6'1 and 290 and uh, has no sacks. He didn't sack the quarterback, <laughs> but he made the all-conference team. I like that. So it's a third down and a yard. Kansas State hasn't converted one yet. They bring the extra blocker back there, Lecky, and he leads the way. Scoby stood up, though. I don't know, very close, too close to call. They may have to take a look at this one. Kalmus and Stefan put the hit on number one. And I think they're going to have to bring the chains out. Well, that extra blocker in the backfield uh, was Lecky, 53. He's a right... When he's, not, when he's not blocking in the backfield, he's a right guard. <laughs> That's a heck of a fullback extra to have up there, 285 pounds. Important measurement here for both teams. He didn't need much. And he got it. Not even the nose for the football. Whatever's less than a nose is what he got it by. Don't forget, Monday night, the Chiefs travel to New England. They'll take on the Patriots at 9 Eastern, 6 Pacific here on ABC. And Sunday night on ESPN, 8.30 Eastern. A couple old rivals, Packers and the Bears, get together at Soldier Field on ESPN. First down at the 48-yard line. Allen now split out as a wide receiver to the right side again. Beasley the quick throw to Morgan. Morgan wheels and deals outside. Knocked out of bounds at about the 43-yard line. Going to be just shy, I believe, of another first down. Not a sophisticated passing attack. Just a little stop, little hitch route. Get the ball out to your, your top receiver. 
This kid has played 23 games at Kansas State. He's a junior college transfer, so he came in last year. 23 games, has 22 touchdowns, and those touchdowns have averaged nearly 40 yards per catch. Last year, he averaged 24 yards a catch. Here's a give to Allen. He's upended, but he got the first down. Williams came up from the secondary. He was tackled by Roy Williams. Still going to move the chains. That's just inside the 42. Should be good enough. It is. So Bill Snyder said we have to get the ground game going. Ron Hudson said the same thing as offensive coordinator, and little by little they're doing it. And, and really the spark plug of the whole thing is the fullback. Cartwright, the, uh, the guy that wasn't even around in the spring. He goes out right now. 64 rushing yards. They got Hoheisel in there instead at this spot. And they fake it to him. Beasley, plenty of time, throws short. And he throws it to Hoheisel out of the backfield and got about five yards. Lost his footing and went down. Nick Hoheisel made the catch. They've been running on first down, so it's good to get the ball in the air. Ball could have been thrown better, but uh, as long as you're moving it, that's, they, they don't ask Jonathan Beasley to be a perfect set. You know, sure, he could complete more passes. He could look prettier. He could do this. He could do that. But he's what we got, and that's what we're going with. He runs the ball well. He runs our team. Second and five, and here's an option to Allen. He's got great speed. David Allen, nice open field tackle, or he might have been gone. J.T. Thatcher made the stop, but Allen got eight, and it's a first down. Allen hurt his ankle on this very field, the very first game of the year. Kansas State played Iowa here. Has never been the same since. Missed four games. Just trying to get back to that form that made him one of the most electrifying guys in all of college football last year. A great punt returner in his own right, and they expected big things, as Bob said, from that tailback spot from him before the injury in the Eddie Robinson Classic here in late August. Cartwright, he's playing like Haas Cartwright. Down to the 13-yard line. They're running right at him. And it's the fullback that's killing him. That's the right guard. That's Robertson comes around. The offensive center, Cummings, and Stevenson, and Evie on the left side doing a nice job. But it's Cartwright that's just just being a load for him. 15 more yards for Rock. And he's got it down to the 13-yard line. He came into the Knights game with 230 yards on the season. He's playing tonight like he wants that much tonight. Yeah. And Kansas State will take a timeout. With 10.08 remaining in the first half, Kansas State leading Oklahoma 7-3. Kansas State 7, Oklahoma 3. And a lot of history between these two fellas. Bob Stoops was a defensive assistant under Bill Snyder at Kansas State from 89 to 95 before he went on to be with Steve Spurrier at Florida. And now the second year as a head coach of the Sooners, who are down by four. And it could end up being more the way things are going. David Allen. And he's tripped up by Kalmus. Only got about a yard. Rocky Kalmus, one of the finalists for the Butkus Award that is here in the stadium tonight. And he's had a marvelous season from his linebacker position. Came in as a leading tackler with 113 stops. He's already made the Walter Camp All-American team. And he's the all-time tackles for loss leader now, having passed Brian Bosworth. Tenth play of the Kansas State drive. A little option again. The pitch to Allen. Oklahoma stretched it out pretty nicely. Torrance Marshall got out there to help on the stop. And it's going to bring up third down. They did, and they're getting some nice yardage out of the option. Meyer, the tight end, is doing a good job of cutting off Marshall, the inside linebacker, and it's stretching it way to the, the sideline and allowing them to not to get it's the huge plays, but get five or six yards out of it. Third down at five. Morgan trots out to the near side with Lockett. And Allen goes the other way. 
Will Beasley call his own number on a quarterback draw? Here he comes. He got to the five, but he's short of the first down. Good call, partner. When they spread everybody out, the tendency inside has been, like we mentioned, for the quarterback to run. And Beasley is running a lot inside the 10-yard line. Well, Oklahoma gave and gave and gave on that drive, but they stiffened when they had to. And out comes the field goal unit of Jamie Ream. But you still can't like it if, you, uh, if you're on Bob Stoops' side of the field. 30 plays for Kansas State, only 18 for Oklahoma. And they're getting pushed around on that last drive they were. Ream to try a 22-yard field goal. This should be an afterthought chip shot for him. He's that good a kicker. Trying to give him a touchdown lead here in the second quarter. And he's got it. Jamie Ream tacks on three more. Kansas State by a touchdown, and Josh Heifel knows he's got to get the Sooners in gear. Josh Heifel was sharp on the first drive, but now he's thrown two interceptions and has fallen to five out of 12, and he knows he's got to get the Sooners' offense in order. Savage three yards deep, won't bring it out. And Oklahoma will work from the 20-yard line. Our sprint, PCS game back. Walter Camp award winners that were quarterbacks over the years and then won the Heisman Trophy. Look at that long list. Most recently, Danny Warfel. And you know who won the Walter Camp Award? Yes. Josh Heupel yep. as the Walter Camp 2000 Player of the Year. Got that honor. His coach was also honored as Coach of the Year by Walter Camp. A lot of people wonder who's that. Former coach at Yale who really developed most of the rules we use in football. So that's a prestigious honor for Josh. He'd like to add the Heisman, but he could care less if he could keep his team undefeated. Right now, he's just got to get it working. And he goes out in the flat to Seth Latrell, his fullback. And Seth goes out to about a seven-yard gain. Josh Heupel's road to Oklahoma was a very circuitous one out of Aberdeen, South Dakota. You don't get a lot of quarterbacks out of Aberdeen. Went to Weaver State and then transferred to Snow Junior College. Put up 28 touchdowns in a part-time role as quarterback. He was brought in here from the junior college ranks and has become a star and has every passing record in Sooner history. Griffin straight ahead, just trying to get a first down. The last three times they've had the ball, they haven't gotten a first down. I think they've got one here. So a first down, Oklahoma with 7.38 to go in the half. Let's check in with John Saunders in New York. John? Brad, in the Burger King update in the SEC championship game presented by Dr. Pepper, Florida against Auburn. Rex Grossman, 27 yards to Jabbar Gaffney, the freshman with another great game. They win it, and they're headed to the Nokia Sugar Bowl. Our congratulations to Steve Spurrier and his staff and his team for that win. Heifel flares it out. Griffin's got a head of steam. Nice defensive job by Milton Proctor. Got a hand on the back of the pads and dragged him down after a pickup of seven. That's the first first down, Bob, yeah. for Oklahoma in eight and a half minutes uh, when there's eight and a half minutes left in the first and quarter. what he's doing, he's not throwing the ball downfield. He's kind of softening him up by swinging it out to his uh, tailbacks. Griffin, that's, you know, we said he came in with 38 receptions on the year. He's thrown the ball six times to Wolfolk. He's only caught one. That's the one he threw downfield. Intercepted. Second and two on short yardage. They'll go with a quick opening draw again, and this time Kansas State's all over it. No gain. Tungiai, the defensive tackle, made the stop. Part of that Hawaiian connection with Fata Fahey. Those guys, they say, they'll start talking a little bit of Hawaiian down there on the defensive line. Nobody knows what they're talking That's about. That's kind of nice, too. The offensive yeah. linemen, they'll, they'll talk Hawaiian. <laughs> yes, that island talk. That's right. <laughs> Time of possession is all Kansas State. Mark Mangino, the offensive coordinator. What's he called on third and one? They failed on their other two times to have a third and one. Here comes a blitz. Heifel to throw. Maybe not. Tongi is there, and so is Beisel. Heifel goes down in the heat, and Oklahoma's got to kick it again. Well, they're all coming, and he's trying to get the ball out. Trying to throw the ball up top, but the coverage just won't allow it. There's too many guys in the too many white shirts in the pocket. The two receivers on the to his left side at single coverage didn't get open. 
The number two punt returner in the nation, almost 22 a return, might get a shot this time, unless Ferguson can keep it away from him. Yeah, it took a funny bounce. He was going to take a crack at it, but he had to clear out and let it roll down inside the 26-yard line. A 45-yard kick. And college football on ABC Sports brought to you by Dr. Pepper and your local Dr. Pepper bottler. Dr. Pepper makes the world taste better. Chevy trucks, the most dependable, longest-lasting trucks on the road. Pacific Life, annuities, insurance, investments. Use the power of Pacific Life. And Suzuki. And the innovative quad runner and quad master all-terrain vehicles. There's what they're playing for tonight. The Big 12 championship trophy. Kansas State has been here before and failed to pick up that honor. And Oklahoma, its first Southern Division title ever. And they're trying to take it and a shot to Miami all in one fell swoop. And so far, the trailing 10-3. Prior to the snap, ball start on the offense. It'll be a five-yard penalty and remain first down. That one on Beasley, I think. Bill Snyder, what a remarkable job he has done at Kansas State. But we said Not penalties have else. been a problem. Yeah, but he's uh, he's done a great job at Kansas State. The worst penalty year they ever had was 98. They had 118, but they also were in the championship game that year. Beasley winds up and fires deep. It's almost intercepted by Michael Thompson. Boy, Beasley showed his arm there and went deep for Morgan. He did. He had him if he would have thrown the ball sooner and gotten the ball there. Both receivers were open downfield. Lockett was down there with him. Yeah. He just threw it too late and allowed Thompson time to get back inside. Right now. Throw it now. Now. He can't see. See, he's looking downfield. He's trying to find where, the, and he's looking around the offensive and defensive linemen. That's why he didn't throw it when he should have to make the completion. They list Jonathan at 6-1. We spent a lot of time with him yesterday. I'm not sure about 6-1. Second down and 15. They'll try to go straight ahead. This has worked for him, but not this time. As they've got Cartwright all wrapped up. Roy Williams was one of the first ones there, and he got help from his Sooner friends. Four fifty left in the half and a third and long coming up and our first and ten presented by Pacific Life and it's going to be more than ten this time they need twelve for a first down they need thirteen in fact long yardage situations three wide receivers including Morgan and when it's third and long or more they haven't fared too well Third and five and more, I should say. This is 13 yards to go. Play action. Beasley fires on the sideline, almost intercepted. And it was Michael Thompson. He's had his hands on the last two passes. He has. That's a dangerous situation for Kansas State. They are not a sophisticated passing attack. And Beasley should not be put in difficult situations. Trying to pick up third and 13. This is a dangerous throw right here. Oklahoma's defense did its job, and they're going to win the battle of field position here unless it's a monster punt. Travis Brown to kick, and that's J.T. Thatcher. Brown's inside his own 10. Thatcher's run two punts back for touchdowns. Let's see if Savage does a little dancing back there to try to block a kick. They got it! Picked out of the air! Ante Jones has got it for Oklahoma! Is Norman. Two starting wide receivers in on the punt block team, and Norman got it. Swanee told us when we opened the show that it could take a play like that, and Bob Stoops is finally smiling. Where's Norman? Right here. He's going to come right up the center. He's a, one of the starting wide receivers, one of the top five. His is his second punt block of the year. The other one was blocked by Savage, who is also a wide receiver. We saw Savage get his. Now we've seen Norman get his. Yeah. And he's out there as a wideout on first and ten, trying to take advantage of the turnover. 
rifle in an empty backfield from the shotgun. In trouble. And he got it complete. Mackey. And Mackey's got it down to the 11-yard line. It's all on the shoulders of Josh Heupel. He's, he's, he's competing with the defense, and the defensive coordinator, Phil Bennett, told us yesterday, he says, I did a bad job the first game in Manhattan. I called some blitzes on third and long situations I should have never called. He says, today I'm going to be smarter. He's still pressuring him, but he's also mixing things up downfield. Norman and Mackey go out, and Griffin and Latrell, the backfield, comes back in. Second down, a short four. Under 320 in the half. Undefeated Oklahoma trailing by a touchdown, but trying to tie it up here. Savage in motion. Here they come. Heifel swings it out to Griffin. Inside the 10, Griffin puts his head down, and he's very close. Out of bounds inside the two. Just outside the one-yard line. He almost scored. Like the, I like this call, blitz inside, swing it outside and get rid of it quickly. Don't hold the ball back there. The other choice is throw it quickly. Now, now Bob Brad, this is tough territory for Oklahoma because they don't have that big running back to pound it in. Last time these two teams met, they only had 11 yards total rushing in the ball game. So this creates quite a problem for the Oklahoma offense because it's tough to throw with only the 10 yards of the end zone. Griffin. Is the tailback Latrell, the fullback, is in motion. They fake it to Griffin. They go to the end zone of the tight end. He's got it. Touchdown, Oklahoma. Trent Smith. For the 24th game in a row, Heifel throw a touchdown pass. And we're a point away from a tie ball game. Turnovers have driven the uh, the offenses in this ball game. Block kick turns into a touchdown. Duncan for the point after to try to make it even at 10. And he does right down the middle. So Bill Snyder's team had a touchdown lead. But Josh Heupel, as he's done so well all season long, pulled the trigger to the perfect man. If you're going to throw the ball down on the one-yard line, the best time to throw it is on first down. Tight end releases. Look how wide open he is. Heifel throws it out. Could have thrown it further to the sideline. Kind of short-armed that one. But Smith goes up and makes the play over Cooper. And Smith at 6'5". Got up over Cooper, number 40. And Bob Stoops, who was smiling after the block punt, what was he acting like after the touchdown? He'll take it. Tie game. Well, the special teams can stand up for that one. Yes, they can. The block punt by Norman. So the two interceptions have been countered by his 19th touchdown pass of the year. And we got a good one cooking with three minutes left in the half. And Josh knows, Hypo knows he didn't throw a good ball on that touchdown even. Could have thrown it quicker and could have thrown it more to the corner of the end zone. Under threw him. He just wanted to make sure he was so wide open. Just wanted to make sure that he hit him. Aaron Lockett waiting on Duncan's kick. He'll get a handle on it from the two. Lockett across the 20. Out to the 28 yard line. Don't forget tomorrow, join John Saunders and Terry Bodden as they reveal the matchups for the BCS Bowl games, including the big one, of course, the FedEx Orange Bowl, which will be for the national championship. It's the Tostitos Bowl Championship Series selection show tomorrow, live 3 30 Eastern, 12 30 Pacific, right here on ABC. Got a lot of teams watching this game, pulling for different guys at University of Miami. Here's our online poll tonight. Who should win the Heisman Trophy? Pick one and log on to ESPN.com, keyword BCS to vote, and we'll find out what you think of that in your online poll on that selection show with John and Terry tomorrow. First down. Scobie dropped in his tracks. J.T. Thatcher. Sometimes they give him grief about his tackling prowess. He's made a couple big hits tonight. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 
We were talking to Phil Bennett, the defensive coordinator for uh, Kansas, Kansas State. And uh, Thatcher, Thatcher uh, used to uh, ran by him at the last game and uh, used to coach. Bennett used to coach uh, at Thatcher at Oklahoma. Right. And uh, that was when he uh, was younger, and he ran by him. And now he says he's got eight interceptions. He says, how do I look now, coach? <laughs> Second and long. Beasley, plenty of time. Fires, and Thompson almost had it again. Well, Michael, you're playing well, but hold on to one of those out there. Yeah, that's right. He's only held on to one of them during the season. Beasley's got to be careful because a lot of the throws he's making are almost being intercepted. Other scores today, Navy and a thriller over Army. You saw Marshall over Western in the MAC. And Florida, as we showed you, as John gave you the look at Steve Spurrier's Gators winning the SEC title in Atlanta. And here are the Big 12 titles on the line with two minutes left in the first half, and we're even at 10. Third down and 12. Again, their third and longs haven't been comfortable for them. Be careful here. Beasley wants to throw a middle screen to Allen. Got him with the convoy in front. But he's dropped by Marshall. Or was it Williams? Torrance, Marshall, and Williams are both there. Maybe the two surest tacklers on the team, along with Calvis. And they bring him down, and they're going to have to give it up again. And Oklahoma's taking a timeout. They know they've got an opportunity now with 148 left in a tie game to try to get some more points before halftime. Right. And on the other side of the field, Kansas State, you just had a punt block. Now you have to go back out and kick again. Have you have you got that mistake corrected? Travis Brown is the guy that will be thinking about that. Bill Snyder's done a great job, uh, Brad. He does it his own way. He's a workaholic. Uh, he's a, he's, he wants to control everything. He's tireless. He attention to detail. Very focused. The other thing that he does that I like is that he adjusts very quickly to what the other team is doing and giving him. He's more than doubled the all-time Kansas State wins over the second-place coach, who was Mike Ahern back in the early 1900s. But before Bill came along, the winning percentage from 35 to 88 was 28%. They only won 138 games in that stretch. And from 89 to present, 70 wins, 98 overall for him. So he's almost done what they did over a 50-year stretch by himself in 12 years. J.T. Thatcher waits on the punt. Here we go. A Brown. Again, Norman and Savage all in track stances. Low snap, Baba. They're going to get him this time, too. And the ball is still loose. It'll be Oklahoma ball unless Kansas State. I don't know. came up with a loose ball now. Kazar's got it. It's first down, Kansas State. I don't think he went out of bounds. I didn't think he did. I don't know. I don't see any signal. The officials are trying to sort it out. We'll obviously get another look. May or may not matter. This is what this is what blocking a punt will do to you. The center snapped it low. He wanted to get it there quickly, and he had a bad snap. But remember, it was never kicked. It's basically like a running play there, and if they scooped it up and didn't step out of bounds, it should be a first down run. Well, Bob and Brad, I've been watching the center for Kansas State. Every time he snapped the ball on the special teams activity, and he has been trying to rifle it back as if to say, if I get it back there faster, we might lose it or make sure this that is we a don't get it blocked and have a problem. fumble situation. By rule, on fourth down, the only person that can advance the ball is the fumbler. The ball goes back to the fumbling spot, first and ten. There's the part of the equation I didn't put in there. Right. It wasn't go. It wasn't Brown who ran with it. He loses it. He ran with it initially. The but punter ran it initially, and then I think it was Lieber or Kazar, 54. Maybe two of them had it. They had a couple guys holding on for dear life. So it's going over to Oklahoma. And that rule is in there specifically in case a, a guy is running the football. Todd Christensen, the, one, old, the old Oakland Casper, Raider. The Dave Billy Casper, Casper yeah, threw Billy. it forward on fourth down. <laughs> and that's a good rule. Dave Casper fumbled it to himself. You can't do that. It's, so it's in both pro and college football. Here's another look. 
So on fourth down, if you're not going to make it, so you just can't throw it forward and have somebody else recover. Golden opportunity for Oklahoma again at the 27-yard line. Here comes the pressure on Heifel. He got away from it. He's got some field in front, but he goes with a throw incomplete. He was almost over the line of scrimmage when he threw that ball. That ball was way short. He was on the run, and it was way short. It must have been 15 yards short of his receiver. Now, they say there's nothing wrong with the throwing arm, but I don't know. This, this one... You That's see, a duck. In, in the back of the end zone, he had to get that ball up and throw it to the back of the end zone or out of the end zone, and he threw it 15 yards short. 124 left in the half. Two timeouts left for Oklahoma. Here they come. Norman in motion. Up the middle. Bringing the heat in a hurry. And a lob pass out there. Griffin's the closest guy. McGraw came in for the secondary and put the hit on high pull. And it's third and ten. Josh can almost bet that if they didn't come last time, they're going to be blitzing this time. McGraw from that safety spot. He'd been a little banged up. He sat out the Missouri game. But he came like a steam engine on that one. They're doing a nice job, Kansas State defensively, a nice job of mixing blitz and coverage. Bob, I think here's a chance, here's an opportunity for Heifel to take a chance. Even under the blitz, if he just throws it into the end zone, gives his receiver a chance in a certain area, it's a good player right now. He hasn't tried Curtis Fagan yet. They're showing blitz again. There they come. Heifel, and this one has whistles and flags. It'll stop this with 116 left. Prior to the snap, delay on the offense. It'll be a five-yard penalty and remain third down. Bob Stu says what? Delay a game? 120 on the clock. What's going on now when these guys are blitzing inside here? This is what's going on outside. Look at the two receivers on the outside against the two corners. That's just single coverage, and they're not beating the corners on the outside. That's why Hypo has nobody to throw it to. Remember that Nebraska game when they brought everybody and they had that single coverage and he laid that thing out to the post yes. to Fagan? Yes. They haven't seen that tried yet. It's third down and a mile. Third and 15. Let's pick up some yardage to try and kick a field goal here. Now they get the extra protection in there on the tight end side on the right. Hypo throws. Oh, boy, Latrell is popped. Milton Proctor, the extra defensive back, let him have it. Yes. I don't think Latrell ever saw Proctor. Beisel, 44, is getting there with some pressure. He had three receivers to his left side, and none of them were open. This would be Duncan's longest field goal of the year. They don't ask him to kick from this far out usually. He's going to try one from 50. He was hitting in the mid-40s in the pregame, and they're going to pooch punt it as they direct snap to him. And much like Beasley did on this end of the field, they're going to get it down inside the three-yard line. We've seen two beautiful quick kicks. Pretty good special teams. These teams have all the weapons, all the tricks. We're a minute and six away from halftime. And at halftime, there's a nervous guy. We met him at the Dr. Pepper party before the game. James Morrow of Edmond, Oklahoma. A cement contractor by trade, and he's going to be a kicker by night. <laughs> he's going to try a field goal to make himself a bunch of money. Yep. So stick around for that. Swanee will be talking to him before he kicks it. And I know, Greased, you were giving him some pointers over there at the party before the game. Yeah, I used to, you know, I used to kick a few uh, <laughs> field goals in my day. <laughs> He's got a square toe on. That's, that's the first good thing. Kansas State at its own one-yard line with 106 left. And Oklahoma's going to take a timeout. Well, they have one timeout remaining with 66 seconds left in the half in a tie game. Let's check in with John in New York. 
alongside Terry Bowden. Coming up on the MSN Halftime Report, Butch Davis, head coach of Miami, very nervously watching, and we'll have a talk with him. Yeah, the only person more nervous than the Kansas State kicker would be Butch Davis. It's all coming up on the MSN Halftime Report. Now back to you for the final minute. All right, guys, we'll see you in a minute. 10-10 tie. Brad Nessler, Bob Greasy, Lynn Swan, and our ABC crew with the Big 12 Championship. Arrowhead Stadium, Kansas City, the home of the Chiefs. And the BCS standings coming into this one, as everybody knows, Oklahoma undefeated and on top of the heap. A win tonight sends them to the Orange Bowl. Florida State and Miami, tight two and three. And Washington and Virginia Tech round out the top five. You know, it, and if they win tonight, they'll not only win that Big 12 trophy we showed you, but they'll have a shot at one of the prettiest pieces of equipment you'll ever see. The Sears National Championship Trophy will be on the line in the Orange Bowl, the FedEx Orange Bowl, January 3rd, right here on ABC Sports. And you know, uh, Butch Davis and the Miami Hurricanes oh are boy. pulling. Are they cheering for the Wildcats? For the Wildcats. They're thinking <laughs> purple. So at the one-yard line, this is a precarious spot for Kansas State because just Beasley himself lining up behind center is about a yard deep in the end zone. Yes. And you don't want to make a mistake and end up with a safety here. And you got guys like Rocky Kalmus who's safety conscious. And they might try to bring it. I don't know, but they're going to bring Morgan and Lockett out here as wide receivers. And that may free things up a little bit. But as you can see, the tailback, Scobie, is six yards deep in the end zone. Well, I think you give it to the fullback. He's been the best ball carrier all day. And Beasley will keep it. He didn't get much a yard. I think I think all you have to do is that because uh, Oklahoma only has one timeout left. If they want to try and uh, take some, uh, force some, uh, they're not even going to take a timeout here. Apparently not. Yeah. Both teams, I guess, are going to be content with a 10-10 tie. Although I would, I would stop the clock and force them to snap it as many times in, this, as well. in this area of the field as, they, as you could. Maybe they're going to let one more play go and then stop it and see if they could get into a situation timing-wise where they'd have to have a punt. There's about 18 seconds difference. There's the play clock. You see the game clock as well. And it's Beasley again, and up over the top they go. They did try to blitz and see if the ball would come loose. It didn't. And now I would assume Oklahoma would take it. Nope, they're going to head to the locker room. They'll take it the way it's come at them. Well, they got down close. Kansas State came up with a goal line stand, or Oklahoma would have had a touchdown early. They did get a field goal. Kansas State came back with 10 straight points. But then Josh Heifel following a turnover by his team. Took it down and threw to his tight end to tie things up. And 10-10 is our halftime score. The seventh-ranked team and the number one team are dead even. 10-10 in Kansas City. John and Terry, the halftime report coming up next. You're watching the Dr. Pepper Big 12 Championship on ABC Sports. The Dr. Pepper Big 12 Championship halftime at Arrowhead Stadium, 10-10. Here's some of the highlights of the first half. Josh Heupel was intercepted twice. This one by Dyshot Carter led to a Jonathan Beasley touchdown run for the only touchdown of the first half for Kansas State. But a block punt by Josh Norman, as we said special teams would be big, led to Heifel's throw to Trent Smith, his tight end for a touchdown, and that tied us up at 10-10 in the second quarter. Welcome back, everybody. Brad Nessler and Bob Greasy as it continues to cool off here at Arrowhead. Neither team really got much going as far as extended drives, did they? Only, uh, both teams had the ball eight times. Only one possession, that by Kansas State, was over seven plays, and that was a 12-yard drive, ended up in a field goal. But just as we thought, Two turnovers by uh, Oklahoma, one turnover by Kansas State, and the other big turnover was the block punt. And pretty good defensive effort by both teams, and uh, the special teams, as we said, would be a big part of it as we take a look at the Dr. Pepper first half statistics. Oklahoma minus six yards rushing. And their third down conversions for both teams has been horrendous, and you can see Kansas State had the ball seven minutes more. That... Average starting field position really swung in Kansas State's favor over the course of the second quarter. That was Brian Bosworth who just gave Josh Heupel a pat on the backside. There's an odd couple for you. <laughs> <laughs> 
I like the buys, but I can't <laughs> see him hanging around with Heifel. <laughs> he didn't hang around quarterbacks much when he played. No, he? unless he was trying to collar them. There you go. Bill Snyder likes to adjust things, and he does it very well. He's very bright. Student of the game, studies a lot. That's what's going to be interesting about this second half, because Stoops is the very same way, and there'll be some adjustments made. Could cause for some big plays before this one's over. Long ways to go. Starting the third quarter. Jamie Ream to kick. JT Thatcher back there with Savage. Savage about five yards deep. Will have to take a knee. And Lynn Swan with Bob Stoops. I talked to Bob Stoops when he came out. First I asked him about Josh Hypo. And he says Josh is fine. He's just got to be a little more consistent. He said he's going to try and run the football. They need to establish some kind of ground attack to be more successful in the first half, in the second half. When I asked him about Rock Cartwright, and was he surprised that Kansas State was using that fullback so much and so effectively? He says, well, he's so effective because we missed tackles. Had we not missed those tackles, I don't think they would have used him quite as much as they did in the first half. That's definitely a Bob Stoops answer to a question like that. <laughs> On first down, Heifel from the gun. Fires high, and Wolfolk couldn't bring it down. And that is, what, the seventh or eighth time he's shot one in Wolfolk's direction. He's only yeah. caught one. Exactly, and it's a good thing he threw it high and outside because that ball was close to being picked off. Josh's numbers, 10 of 21. The touchdown to Smith, two interceptions. Here's where he's thrown the ball, down deep down the left side, 0 of 3 early in the game. And those there was a couple of those he could have hit. Second down at 10. Potafe, he may have jumped in the neutral zone. He's saying he was drawn offside. And it is going to go against Oklahoma. Mike Skinner, I think the right guard maybe came out of his stance a little bit. Prior to the snap, false start on the offense. It'll be a five-yard penalty and remain second down. So that backs it up to the 15. That's four penalties on the Oklahoma offense now. Second and 15. All three wideouts. Here they come. To the left. The tight end comes in tight. So he's backing off. This guy's coming. He is still coming. They are still coming. Heifel trying to buy time. Going deep. Got Fagan out there and he dropped it. They hadn't thrown one at Fagan all day, and he should have had it. And he's been a hot receiver. In the last six games, he's caught 29 balls and seven touchdowns in the last six games, but he missed that one. Could have gone for the six on this one. Nice pickup. Nice pickup pick yeah. by Latrell. Latrell picks up uh, very nicely. Pretty good throw. Yeah. You got to catch that ball. Heifel's missed his last five, but this one will give his wide receiver the credit at four. Josh stands in, zips it to Smith down the middle of tight end. And all of a sudden, his tight ends become his favorite target. And what they're doing is they're throwing on Jared Cooper, the strong safety. They're splitting the tight end out and throwing on Cooper. Bob, what that tight end did on that pass play was something the other receivers have not been doing, and one of the reasons why I think they've been dropping the ball. Watch his hands as he goes for the ball. He reaches up, tight end, catches it right in his hands. The balls that have been dropped by the Oklahoma receiver have been when they've been going up for the ball and trying to catch it up against their body and with their arms. They've got those arms covered, and they just slide right through. Trent Smith goes out, but he's got three big catches, including a touchdown. Look out. They're going to say incomplete pass. Oh, boy, did he take a shot from Deron Tyler. I don't think Josh ever saw him coming, Grease. He didn't. He was, looking, he was looking in the other direction. He's up here. He's never going to see him come around the corner. He gets a clear shot on him right there. It's a lucky thing that Josh got rid of the football. Just started to follow through, or that would have been a fumble. Just barely. Second and ten. So no harm done other than Heupel took one in the kisser. Josh to throw again. Flips it out to Fagan. 
forward progress at about the 41 yard line maybe got three yards still going to be third and long first drive third quarter always interesting to see the adjustments made on both sides offense and defense Oklahoma had a shot at a deep pass and dropped it that had to be really disheartening for uh, Bob Stoops and Oklahoma because that's one thing they thought pick up the blitzes and get it Bill Phil Bennett's done a good job tonight yes he has they make nice adjustments too Third down and seven now. Eiffel's favorite target's been number 88, his tight end. I'm not going to have much time. Comes a blitz. Eiffel high, intended for Wolfolk. Wolfolk had the angle on the defensive back, but that pass was way, way, way too high. It almost looked as though he didn't know which way that Wolfolk was going to go, whether he was going to run a slant or whether he was going to run a takeoff. If that was a blitz adjustment, Anyway, it uh, doesn't look good for uh, didn't look good for the quarterback. Ferguson to punt, and a lot of shifting on that defensive front for Kansas State. See if they can get close to the punter. They're coming after it. He got rid of it. It's a good kick. The bad news is Lockett makes the catch, and Lockett. It's amazing because they did not have a return set up. That was a block. He did that on his own. He just took a 44-yard punt, 33 yards the other way. So great field position for the Wildcats. They're tied with the top-ranked Sooners. Our Aflac trivia question this week. In what year did the closest Heisman Trophy vote take place? We've got our own tight poll going right now. 27% of the votes have already reported in for Josh Heifel and Chris Wanky, the two leading vote getters. We assume. Hey, but I know a... that Drew Brees hey, is watching, and, hey, and Bob Greasy hey, hey, wants to interrupt now. us. Yeah, you got to have my man, my Drew Man. <laughs> Rose Bowl. They're going to the Rose Bowl this year. Here's a give to Scobie. And he got out to about the 18 yard line. The reason Kansas State's not out near midfield. As we went to commercial at the very end of that return by Lockett, there was an illegal block. And that backed them up where they are now. Watch number 20, the right of your screen there. Number 87, that's Thalman. Thalman got Kalmus in the back. Block, block in the back. Here's Beasley on the keeper. And Beasley fighting. First down. Beasley, the ball carrier. Roy Williams in on the stop. The plays you see the offense running on the first drive of the third quarter, the ones they've talked about at halftime, the ones they've gone over their charges. All right, pick out all the plays that worked in the first half. Let's go out and run them. Right. And then we'll adjust the other plays. But these are the ones that are best coming out. Third down to two. Third down conversions have been horrible on both sides. Credit the defenses for a lot of that. Beasley can't get him drawn offside. He sure tried, and now he's going to keep it. He's going to have to struggle, but he got it. And Williams brings him down, but he got to the 33-yard line. Ten-yard scamper. Room to maneuver. He's a gamer. He's a gamer. He does whatever it takes. Little fake. This was a quarterback keep the whole way. Nothing to the left and just has the ability to get back and make a first down. He's 20-3 and three as a starter, as we told you. The only Big 12 quarterback to ever rush for five touchdowns in a game. Did that against North Texas. He's got their only touchdown tonight. And he just got a big run there. First down, Wildcats, their own 33. Again, they shift David Allen out as a wide receiver. Play action. Easily. Throws the deep sideline. Incomplete intended for Meyer, his tight end. The design was good. The execution was not. Coming up Friday, it's ABC.comedy, where we're taking the funniest stuff from the Internet and beaming it right into your living room. The premiere of Dot Comedy, Friday, 8.30, 7.30 Central, right here on ABC. Torrance Marshall squinting over to the sideline to get the call. It was Torrance Marshall who saved the day in the Texas A&M game, or Oklahoma wouldn't be undefeated. Second and ten. 
Here comes the Oklahoma blitz. Up over is Williams, but he didn't get to him. And Beasley throws a strike out to lock it. Well, Roy Williams he got went. a Superman leap, and he didn't get there in time. He didn't, and Beasley does a nice job of staying composed and stepping around. Watch uh, Williams right there, 38, just takes a leap. Beasley says, hey, I can get away from you. That's a nice first down. And a throw to lock it, good for 11. So Kansas State gets some room to work, and they get out in the vicinity of where they originally had that punt return before the penalty. They come up to the line in a hurry on a first down at the 44. Beasley, the keeper again. This time not much. Thatcher's got him after a pickup of two. That play was designed at halftime. I talked about Snyder adjusting quickly. That time they started the option, and the, the word they got inside the locker room was the linebackers are flowing real quick when the option starts. So he started the option, stopped, and then cut right back yep. up the middle. We're under 11 minutes in the third quarter. Top-ranked Oklahoma, 11-0. and 0. And Tied up with seventh-ranked Kansas State right now. Wildcats seventh play of the drive. Here come the Sooners up close. Calmus and Marshall now they back away. They're going to bring it anyway. Beasley fires. That one is almost picked off by Derek Strait. He was. Was. He's got it. And now the official makes a very yeah. late call. Well, he was looking for some help. He made no call. He was looking for the umpire to give him some help. Yeah, and the and the field judge in the center of the field. He made no call because he didn't know. He just marked the ball. That ball was thrown behind the receiver. And straight, much like Michael Thompson, almost had his hands on one. This ball is going to be thrown to the inside. That hit the ground. Yep, good call. And the official on the outside, the head linesman, couldn't see it. Third and eight. Pressure on Beasley. Middle screen. That's got to be Kalmus. Nope, it's Marshall. One or the other. Whoa. If it's not 10, it's 20. <laughs> 10 will get you 20. <laughs> wow, what a hit. That kid can play. I'll tell you what, if Kalmus is the uh, defensive player of the year in the Big 12, this kid was second. Oh, Bob and Brad, Coach Snyder said in the second half he wanted to get the ball to Morgan. He hasn't done that yet. He only has three catches all in the first half, and he was going to shore up the blocking on this punt team. Well, Here's his first opportunity. Neil Ghosh has had some trouble. Swanee with the snaps. Travis Brown has had one stuffed already. They appear to have the return on this time. Yep. And a high, lazy kick. Thatcher camps under it. Now makes a late play and got about five on the return. Kind of a dangerous catch by JT, but he got it out across the 30-yard line. Oklahoma, Kansas State, 10-10. We'll be right back. Earlier, we asked you our Aflac trivia question. In what year did the closest Heisman Trophy vote take place? We gave you time to think of it. Remember of 85, Bo Jackson just over Chuck Long of Iowa in the closest one ever. And Chuck Long, the passing game coordinator here, who has worked with Josh Heupel since his arrival on Bob Stoop's staff. And Heupel, shovel pass. Haven't seen it all day. Here's Quentin Griffin. Griffin out to the 37-yard line. And Chuck Long in the old days for Hayden Fry at Iowa. And there's how he looked. And boy, he put up some impressive numbers that only Drew Brees could catch. And he did it this year. He did. He broke all the records. And uh, there's Chuck. Does a nice job uh, helping Josh Heupel. That, you know, that one of the blessings for Josh was to have a guy that's been through it. The Heisman race. Not only not only through college wars, but also the Heisman uh, thing. And uh, Josh has handled it very well. Bob Stoop says, I finally sat him down last week, and I said, you know, you, you're so cool, you never say anything, but I'll ask you, is it bothering you? And he said, no. I'm all right, coach. Don't worry about me. Three wide outs to the top of your screen. They got to hurry. They got the pass away. The screen out to Savage. I don't think he got the first down, but he got very close. Maybe he did. He stretched it out pretty well. Chris Johnson made the tackle from his defensive end spot. Mackey limping off. The red zone coverage. Hypo does a very nice job of reading coverages. Ooh, Mackey got rolled up yep, on by his sure own did. man. He did. Time out for 
One of the things we've seen from Oklahoma is that shovel pass. The one thing that we have not seen from Kansas State to Quincy Morgan is the jailbreak screen, That's right. the wide receiver screen. And they run it as well as anybody. Yes, they do. So Mackey limping off, but apparently is okay. And it's a first down. So Savage stretched out at the very last and got the inches needed for the first down. Quentin Griffin comes back in, and now Norman will go out. Eight different receivers Heupel's used today. Trying to mount an offensive drive that's time-sustaining and fruitful at the end. It's been tough to come by. Heupel, draw to Griffin. Straight ahead, still going, the little fella. He's got some powerful legs. He got about five yards. Came into the game with nearly 700 yards rushing on the ground and another 38 receptions. And that was a single season school record for running backs at Oklahoma. Of course, all the years of option football and wishbone football, there weren't a lot of guys catching passes. That's the longest run by the Sooners tonight, and it was five yards. What does that tell you about the defense Ooh, they're playing? Against? I guess. Again, a trio of receivers to Heupel's left. Here comes a blitz. Josh got rid of it. Tight end Trent Smith. He's been the man, and he's got it to the 37-yard line. 17 more yards. Well, that's his best game of the year. There's no question. What they're doing is they're throwing on Jared right here. They're just, they're just throwing on Jared Cooper, just going to run a little slant. Everybody else is inside. They've thrown, they've thrown to uh, Smith about four or five times, and each time Jared Cooper's been on him. Four times for 47 yards and a touchdown, to be exact. First down. The Sooners. Here's a shovel pass again. Griffin. And a penalty marker down is Fadafehi drags him down and Swanee we got a face mask maybe yeah I'm, I'm looking at it as the play came down it has to be inadvertent the hand just came right by the face mask and just dropped straight down didn't look like he really snapped the head back so if he's going to call anything it has to be an inadvertent face mask yeah, you're exactly right Josh Norman just gave us the preliminary signal as Fata he got out there and right there it is that's the swan's eye view of it swan's eye <laughs> this defensive line with Fata Fahey, Bas Beisel, and Johnson. One of the best in the nation. You put those guys together, you come up with a lot no of one. sacks. Come Over up with 30. Uh, yeah, you come up with uh, 31 to be exact. So they walk it down to the 32-yard line. And a first down there. Coming up Monday night, the regular inhabitants of this stadium, the Chiefs, try to keep their playoff hopes alive in Foxborough. They'll take on the Patriots, 9 Eastern, 6 Pacific on ABC. And don't forget, Eric Dickerson gives a weekly preview of each Monday's game. And listen to the Terrell Davis chat show online each week at ESPN.com. Keyword, Monday Night Football. We got Saturday Night Football going on right now. It's first and five, Oklahoma. Quentin Griffin, they fake the end around. He'll keep it. He's got the corner. Griffin, 20. Griffin inside the 10 on his first and goal, Oklahoma. This is a play you're seeing more and more of in college football and in pro football where they'll run a sweep and fake a reverse. And what this does, you see they fake the reverse to Savage. It stops the backside penetration, the backside flow. They all see that reverse guy coming around, and they have to stay and hold the position just in case he gets the ball. Scott Kempenick's out there limping around at offensive tackle. He wanted somebody to come in and take his spot. They didn't get anybody in there, so he's going to have to line up on the right side of that Sooner line. First and goal, Oklahoma. Try to regain the lead. Heifel waits, scans the field, finally throws, and nobody home. The closest guy was Ben Lieber, the linebacker. Yeah. I tell you, Latrell, the fullback, is doing a great job of picking up these linebackers when they get ahead, ahead of Steve. They, but handed to the uh, the defensive backs downfield, nobody's getting open. Nobody's open. 
You know, it was kept pretty quiet about Josh Heupel having a versus sack in his throwing arm that's been a problem all season long. Grease, could that be bothering him? He's thrown some balls that just don't look like him. You know, I mean, he's got a lot of pressure put on him. I mean, he's getting hit a lot, but when he throws the ball, he, some of the time he's getting close to anybody. Second and goal at the Kansas State 8. Heupel dances around. He might try to get this one on the ground. He heads to the corner. He's in. Touchdown. seven yards and the Sooners are in front they give him grief about his speed in the 40 but he's been fast enough this year on hey, some touchdown runs in that situation he was fast enough Duncan for the point after and the number one team in the country is up seven. What I like about Josh Heupel, if he can't do it through the arm of breaking, breaking there, he's got enough sense and ability to get outside and says, all right, I'll beat you with my feet. And he does to the corner. Sooners lead. Near the conclusion of tonight's game, we'll select a Chevrolet player of the game from each team. Chevrolet will make a $1,000 contribution to each university's general scholarship fund. A lot of purple in this stadium, but there was a lot of folks in crimson on their feet after Heifel just gave Oklahoma the lead. Duncan to kick. It'll be Lockett from the seventh. Aaron Lockett, dangerous return, man. He's got the kicker to beat, and... Duncan somehow got him collared a little bit and brought him down. A 30-yard return. Looked like from the way he tackled him, he may have grabbed his face mask or a part of his helmet, but... Uh, Maybe take, got him in the shoulder pad. Take a we'll look, yeah. Oh, he just got him right in the numbers. He, he grabbed him uh, part of his shoulder pads right under his arm. Like you said... Aaron's not the biggest guy in the world. Yeah, he's 5'7", five, five, <laughs> 165. He doesn't weigh much. There he is. He comes out as a wide out to the near side. Good field position. Beasley will give it off to Morgan, who came out of the backfield, and he's not going anywhere. Quincy Morgan played tailback in that situation, and Ryan Fitcher. Fisher drops him after a gain of about two. It's just an effort to get the ball in the hands of your big play guys. Put him in the backfield. I don't know how Quincy Morgan will feel about that. <laughs> I like to get out there where those numbers are small. I don't like those 95s in there tackling me. Yeah, we prefer those 20s and 30s. Yeah. Beasley, nine carries for 36 yards tonight. Second down and eight. All three receivers this way. That's the way he comes on the roll. And threw it in the ground. Lockett was the closest man. He was getting some pressure. The pass is incomplete. It is intended for Alan Lockett. Michael Thompson with the coverage. They need to get out to the 47-yard line for a first down. And our first and 10 presented by Quest. They got a ways to go. It's third down and eight. 4.52 remaining in the third quarter with Bob Greasy and Lynn Swan. I'm Brad Nessler. It's nice to have you with us. Cold night in Kansas City. Pretty hot game going, though. You may see that jailbreak screen right here. They play action, and they go deep down the middle to lock it, and he laid out, but he couldn't get it. He had him. Michael Thompson covering, but you're right. He was there. Kansas State's got to give it up. He had him. He had a little blitz coming. So he had to get rid of it, but he had single coverage. Boy, you hate to miss those mm. when you've got them open. Pretty shot of it, but just off the fingertips of a diving Aaron Lockett. And now J.T. Thatcher goes back. They're not giving any of the return guys much. <laughs> no, they're not. They're kicking it away from them, but, but uh, they have had some problems getting rid of the ball right here. They have had one blocked. And another one that he didn't get away either. This time, high, straight up in the air. Very short kick. Thatcher's trying to clear everybody out of the way. It almost hit him. 
And he'll let it go inside the 25. Down to about the 24-yard line. 37-yard kick, but more importantly, no return. Josh Heifel's got a touchdown lead to work with when we come back. Oklahoma by a touchdown with 4.33 left in the third quarter, and they've got the ball back now. Look at the 1987 Iowa football coaches. That handsome gentleman in the corner is Hayden Fry. Bill Snyder is with him, and so is Bob Stoops. Dan McCartney, Iowa State's down there in the left corner. That's a pretty good group, and we're going to talk to the old Silver Fox himself, Coach Fry, here in just a second. Heifel from the gun. Flares it out to Griffin. And Griffin dragged down from behind. Nice defensive play by Monty Bissell. Hayden Fry's along with us. And, Coach, a lot of guys on both these sidelines are your protégés. you got to be pretty proud of them. Brad, I couldn't be more happy. I, I was kind of hoping that the game be called at halftime so neither <laughs> one of them would lose. I know when you first contacted Bill Snyder, what was he, a swimming coach down in uh, Sherman, Texas? Yeah, he was assistant football and the head swimming coach uh, at uh, a little place down in Sherman, Austin College. Second down and eight here. Here they come. Heifel had it batted in the air. Knocked down by Duran Tyler. Coach, the guys you put together, including Barry Alvarez and, and all the rest, what did you see in all these guys when you got them all on your staff? Well, I think that's the secret of me being uh, in football so long. I, I knew how to surround myself with winners. All these guys were great uh, assistant coaches, and now they're great head coaches. I, I, I counted up 26 all together that are head coaches at either uh, college, high school, or pro ball. And, you know, I tell you, you taught Bill Snyder one of the best things, and that's to never tell the media anything. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know how that happened. Bill was with, with me only 17 years. <laughs> <laughs> Here's Heifel on a third down and a long eight. Watch this one right here. Sets up. It's going to go deep down the sideline. Wolfolk trying to make the adjustment and almost caught it. Nice shot, Carter. Good throw, good coverage. And it's time for Oklahoma to punt, so Kansas State's going to get it back. Top of your screen. Does a nice job of going up for the ball. Carter doesn't see it. Almost caught it three times. Just can't make the play. Never caught it at all. And now a dangerous Lockett, who had a 33-yarder call back on that penalty the last time he touched it. shifting against on the Kansas State front. Bringing some pressure. They almost got there. And now Lockett on a line drive at the 43. Look out. Lockett. He might be gone. He is. Forget it. Lockett will take it. Touchdown, Kansas State. on the sideline. That's the fourth punt that Kansas State has returned for a touchdown this year. And the third for Lockett. A very important point after. Here's a guy that never misses extra points. He didn't miss this one either. 17-17. The main concern on this punt is block and then to get a low kick. What Lockett is so good at is making the first wave miss. He made about three or four guys miss without any blocks. And the speed of it, it was a low kick. He caught it right in, in, in flow and just kept going. As a former punt returner, Bob, you watch this young man, the way he performs is just outstanding. He is always moving forward, and you're right. A good punt returner has to always make the first man miss. But Aaron Lockett made the first, second, and third man miss and never once went lateral. He kept moving down the field, and on a short kick where it's just a line drive, the punt coverage team just doesn't have enough time to respond and react to that kind of speed. You know, we talked so much about the special teams to open up the game tonight. Hayden Fry's along with us, and Coach, you know how important they are, and Bill Snyder talks about them all the time. People forget about them, but they win you a lot of ball games. 
Well, they really do, especially when you have two great teams playing great defense. It, it gets down to the kicking game and uh, the specialty team. So we got a tie game. And Oklahoma will get it next. We talked about Coach Snyder, Hayden, a little bit. When you got to Iowa and saw Bob Stoops, did you wonder what in the heck they'd recruited that guy for? No, I never doubted uh, the young man. He, he was so intelligent. He was a great student of the game as, as a player. And then as an assistant coach, he did a wonderful job. There wasn't any doubt in my mind that he would become a successful head coach. Well, I know how proud you are of all these guys that uh, came through your program. Many came through Iowa's players and coached with you along the way. Coach, it's always great to talk to you. I haven't seen you, I guess, since Montgomery, Alabama, where you went in the Blue-Gray Hall of Fame. Say hi to your beautiful wife and enjoy the rest of the game. You guys are great. It's an honor to be on. I'm proud of those coaches. Thank you. All okay. right, Hayden. Thanks, Coach. Thank you, Bob. Hayden Fry. You know, one of his one of his long time saying, he brings a smile to your face. He said, Coach, what do you do on offense? He said, you just, you just scratch, scratch where it itches. itches. There you go. <laughs> I came out of more meetings with jokes to tell at golf tournaments. I never knew anything about what he was going to do. Uh, he was fun. He's something. Good to hear he's healthy and yeah, doing well. Yeah, that's good. 319 left in the third. And we're tied at 17 now. Griffin. And Quentin Griffin got maybe a yard. Quentin Griffin, the ball carrier. Tough defense to run against. And Devane Robinson, the guy that intercepted a pass earlier, makes the tackle here. The quarterbacks tonight, always key ingredients, especially when you got one that's in the hunt for the Heisman Trophy. He's throwing 50% right now, which is better than Jonathan Beasley. Both of them have rushed for a touchdown. Beasley coming in, his completion percentage was about 50% on the year. Second down and nine for Hypo and got, the Sooners. You got single coverage everywhere. If he has time, he's going to lay it up for his tight end. He's been his main target, and he's got another one. Well, that's that's the game plan right there. Trent Smith doing his Keith Jackson imitation. The tight end has been big tonight. Yeah. They're going to the tight end on Jared Cooper, number 40, the strong safety. Here's the matchup down here. Look at all this field over here that they have to work with. Single coverage, that's the tight end against the strong safety. Right here, 6-5 against 6-1. A strong safety that's used to making tackles, not covering wide receivers. We talked about it being a great night for him, Greece, and it's a career high night for Smith. Five for 75. Heifel hit from behind on a play action. He just got leveled by Lieber, and Lieber let up on him a little bit. That could have been uglier. He did. Wow, he got hit pretty good, but that could have been a train wreck. The lever came unblocked. 52 right here. And Josh will feel that one for a while. You know that sometimes, uh, and I don't think that was uh, Josh's man, because sometimes the quarterback's got to be responsible for linebackers and throw hot. But that was just too free over there. And he looked away from him. Second and 20 now. Loss of 10 on the sack. Heifel had it tipped. It's Got almost play. intercepted and flags all over the place. Yeah, and you should. There, he was all over him. Terry Pierce, the linebacker, was in coverage. He was the one bobbling it. I think he's going to be the guilty party as well. The question, though, is, is that that ball was tipped. I don't think you can call interference back there, and it sure was a knuckleball. That was coming out of there end over end. Hopefully our referee, Randy Crystal, is going to straighten this thing out for us. Pass interference on the defense. Spot foul. So the ball apparently wasn't tipped. It was just a bad pass and lucky for Josh Heupel. Here's a tight end right here. He's just going to run a little in route. That's Anderson, the backup tight end. They're going big to the tight ends tonight. Yeah, he's all over him. That's Cooper, number 40, all over him a little soon. Oh, boy. You I know, don't know, the ball was deflected, though. The ball was tipped. And that's what they're saying it wasn't yes. tipped. 
So uh, they don't have replay. We do. But, it was uh, definitely tipped, and then, therefore you cannot have a, a interference on a tip ball. And the jumbotron showed the crowd, and obviously you've seen our replays from the truck, but the officials don't have that advantage. And so there is a little bit of a gift for the Sooners, or so it appears. I think Robinson, Devane Robinson, tipped that ball at the line of scrimmage. Robinson's had a good night getting his hands on it a lot for a defensive lineman. At the 48, first down. Heifel going to flare it out to Griffin in the flats. Quentin puts his head down and gets it down to the 40-yard line. Picked up about eight yards. College football on ABC Sports brought to you by Chevrolet. If only everything was as dependable as a Chevy. Chevy will be there. Chili's Ranch Hand Filet. Tender, juicy, flame-grilled, and served on a bed of awesome blossom strings. Burger King got the urge. And MSN, everything you need to feel at home on the web, all in one place. Our place is Arrowhead Stadium. Kansas City, Missouri, the Big 12 championships on the line. Number one, Oklahoma undefeated. Tied with seventh-ranked Kansas State at 17 apiece. Final 40 seconds of the third quarter. Hypo looks up and he says, all right, here they come again. I got a lot of single coverage down here. Including his tight end, but he'll keep it on the ground to Griffin, and it might be enough for a first down. We're going to stop the clock here because they might have to bring out the chain gang again. Mark Mangino, the offensive coordinator for Oklahoma. He's up for the uh, Frank Broyles Award, which is uh, uh, given to the uh, top assistant uh, in college football. You know, so much has been made about how defenses have changed things against Oklahoma in the last three weeks. And uh, Mark Mangino says, you know, it's it's almost like baseball. <laughs> it's like baseball. We've been seeing a lot of fastballs, and now they're throwing some change-ups and some breaking pitches. And after you see these pitchers a couple times, you're ready to get back in the box and, and hit the breaking pitch and the, and the change-up. And that's what it boils down to. There's been a couple knuckleballs in there, too, tonight. <laughs> you're getting, you're getting, I think they're going back to the fastball tonight. They got a lot of pressure defense and a lot of blitzes. They got a third and one, and they're 0 for 3 on third and ones tonight. Josh taking his time. He ran his team up there. This is what he's looking at right out here. And that's his tight end, but he's going to keep it. I don't know. Only needed a yard, but he slipped on takeoff, and they sort of turned him. Monty Beisel turned him sideways. He might not have gotten it. It'll be awfully close again. They unpile with 18 seconds left in the quarter. They might have to bring the sticks right back out. They should have left them out there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Dance around them for a play. And they will have to take a look at it again. I still don't think he's got it. You know, we talk about um, Bill Snyder and his style. Bob Stoops is almost completely different. Very yep. loose, very family-oriented. Bring the kids by practice on Tuesdays. And they he didn't make. get it. I think he lost a little bit. Well, he got 18 seconds left in the quarter, so he can just he can just wait. He's and, and telling think, the sideline that right and now. Think about it. Yeah, just let the quarter run out. He's pointing to the clock. Yeah, they're all aware of it. So that'll give him plenty of time for an all-important final 15 minutes or more as we're deadlocked at 17. Now the clock does begin. The whole team will come over. We've been out here a long time, but it's one more quarter, the fourth quarter, that's all important. And that's what the Sooners are holding aloft right now. ABC Sports presentation of the Dr. Pepper Big 12 Championship game will continue after this message and a word from our ABC stations. A huge play to start the fourth quarter. Fourth down and inches. They failed in the first quarter at the goal line in this situation. Option. The pitch. Whoa. Griffin's got it in a lot more. Quentin Griffin's got it inside the 20. That was close to disaster. Was it ever? I thought it was going to go the other way. Chris Johnson almost swiped that ball out of midair. 
Watch Johnson, number 36, right there, almost gets it. Hypo just gets it away. Griffin makes a nice play on an option toss not to drop it. Well, that could have been disaster for the Sooners. Instead, it's a huge play, almost reminiscent of that Texas fourth down play when James Brown come up throwing in a previous Big 12 championship encounter. This one's a pitch play. It's a big gainer. They still don't have any rushing yards, but of course the sack yard is just taken away from that. High pull to throw. Josh goes to the end zone. Walker, touchdown! He's aimed a lot of them at number 17, and that one went 17 yards for the touchdown. Well, the key there was no blitz and plenty of time to throw. Trying to go back in front by seven now. The extra point upcoming. Duncan to kick. High snap. They got it down. He got it through. Heifel now has thrown two touchdowns and run for one. Well, again, here's Warfolk over here. He's just going to go down and run a post. But the key is only four guys rushing and plenty of time to throw. It takes a little time for him to get out there. Look at Heifel. Look at the time he's got to throw. And now he's breaking to the center of the field. And Andre Bob did a very nice job. Watch the way he waits and come underneath Josh Norman here, almost like a little screen. Gets a little separation, then gets in the end zone, and he bobbles it just a little bit, but he comes up with it. It just reminds me about when we talked to these coaches, all the coaches on both sides of the ball said they didn't think they could win this ball game without a big play. That's a big play, but keep in mind that fourth down play in the option, that was even bigger in this drive. The first catch by Wolfolk since the first play from scrimmage for Oklahoma. This one is a touchdown from Heifel, his second. And the Sooners are back in front. Duncan to kick. That was a big drive right there. Yes, it was. And be taken at the five by Aaron Lockett. Remember, Lockett had a punt return touchdown, but he's not going to get away on this kick return. Out to the 21-yard line. Josh Heifel's numbers are getting a little better. I don't know if they're Heisman-like. Hey, this is not an easy defense, I'm going to tell you, boys. Two touchdowns throwing. Second best defense in the nation. They come after you. Anybody in the country, Winky, Breeze, they all would have trouble with this defense. He's thrown two and run for one. He is some kind of competitor. Long way to go, though. 14 minutes plus. And now the Wildcats try to answer. And they go to their fullback. Heineke. Drops Cartwright. We're a minute into the fourth quarter, but the Dr. Pepper statistics through three quarters look like this. Rushing yardage all Kansas states, but the passing and total yardage now is coming around. Still both teams, courtesy, as Bob said, a great defense yeah. struggling on third down. Bottom line, good defense and special teams have both gotten the touchdown. Beasley now changes things up on a second and nine. Calmus steps in as though to blitz, but they give it to Scobie. And he's out to about the 28-yard line. Josh Scobie, the ball carrier. Thatcher made another tackle, a pickup of six for Scobie. 79,655 have joined us tonight. It's an all-time conference championship record, the previous Big 12 record was in San Antonio, 65,000. And the previous all-time conference championship record was at the Georgia Dome in Atlanta in 99. This crowd is just under 80,000, and they have enjoyed themselves. Morgan hasn't caught in the pass, the wide receiver, since the second quarter. He's out to the top of your screen with Lockett in the slot that way. Beasley, plenty of time. Throws to Morgan, broken up. Thompson 
and Everidge are there. Yeah. And there were two guys right there. They know, Oklahoma knows who they like to throw to. They want to shut down Quincy Morgan. And on the kicking teams, they want to shut down Aaron Locker. Top of your screen. Starts out and comes back inside. Not a very sophisticated passing attack for Kansas State. Just run out there and I'll throw you the ball. Travis Brown to punt. Low snap. Bad kick. Thatcher shoestring catch, a gutsy one, and got it to the 48-yard line. That, that punter is shell-shocked. Yes, he is. He had one blocked. He was beaten up on another one and never got an opportunity to kick, and he struggled the rest of the night. And now it's Oklahoma with a touchdown lead in great field position. There's some ice you wouldn't mind being in and around. Sears National Championship trophy on display. And Oklahoma and Bob Stoops at 11-0. If they can win this, they got a shot at it in Miami in the FedEx Orange Bowl. But the game's not over. 12-25 to play. Heifel now playing with a touchdown lead, and he's thrown two and run for one. Here comes a blitz. Josh pumps once, waits, throws for Wolfolk again, and underthrew him. Not a good pass, but in the fourth quarter this year, when it's counted, yeah. he's played. 75% completion percentage. You know, a lot of these games, they've been ahead. They don't haven't had to do anything, but uh, he, and he's been out of the game. But when he's had to perform, no, no interceptions, two touchdowns, high percentage. Bob Stoops asked about Josh Heupel and whether it's the system. He said, no way. He's the guy that's gotten us here this fast in two years. Without him, we're not here. He throws again, complete again. His tight end again, Trent Smith. He's got eight more yards, and Smith might be on his way to a 100-yard receiving night. That's his sixth catch of the night. 83 yards and a touchdown. Trent Smith, not that he's little used. He'd come in with 21 catches, but normally it's the wideouts. But he caught the one-yard touchdown as he went up over Cooper. They threw him long for 22 when they needed it. They put him on Cooper again, tossed it in the air, and he adjusted, and he just made that catch across the middle, his sixth of the night. Third and two on a bootleg. Complete again, first down. Guess who? Well, that's, this is this time they want to get him outside the pocket. They got the blitz coming on. You got a blitz, so I'll get you out of the pocket over here. Tight ends coming across the field. Little fake, blitz goes that way. Now I gotta, now I gotta get away from this guy, but I get my tight end right here. That's seven catches for the tight end and seven catches for the tailback. The wide receivers came in. They, the most any wide receiver has is two. Here comes a blitz on high pull. Heavy pressure. He got rid of it. Took a hit from. John McGraw. Since the last possession, when he had all kinds of time to wait on that touchdown route by Wolfolk, now they're bringing everybody. Bennett's bringing, bringing the house. He got burned by giving him too much time, and now he's bringing the house. I think they've decided they're going to go down swinging if they're going to go down. Yeah. Josh has been banged around a little bit. He has. He's been knocked down. He's been hit. He's been sacked. He's been hurried. But he's hung in there. He has hung in there. Second down at 10. At the 38. They load him up again. They bring him again. Swift screen to Fagan. And nice job defensively. he stayed home. The defensive tackle and made the stop. Fadafei, he was a teammate of Josh Heifel's at Snow Junior College. And he said in the regular season matchup, I kept trying to get his attention to say hello. He's an old friend. He said he just wouldn't look at me. He was he too a, cool. He had a game face on him. <laughs> he said after the game, they, they exchanged pleasant right. Oh, they Badgers, huh? The Badgers. Now it's the Sooners. Third down and nine. Ten and a half to go.
scans the field and fires, and it is intercepted. Jeremetrius Butler's got the third interception of the night. He faded him a little bit and picked it off. That's his sixth interception of the year and the tenth of his career. The throw to the left side. Butler does a nice job of just beating him to the ball. It looked like Fagan was supposed to come inside a little bit more. Again, there wasn't a lot of spin on that ball again, though. Uh, there's, there's, he's not throwing that ball the way he normally threw it earlier in the year. Season high three interceptions. Now it's Beasley who wants it deep. And he's got Morgan. Morgan out of bounds, the 38-yard line. How quickly the momentum of a college football game can turn around. An interception by your defense sets up a little out route or deep out route, a corner route by Morgan at the top of the screen. Fakes to the inside. He got good timing on this and gets the ball there. The first Kansas State first down on this play since 11 minutes remain in the third quarter. We've got 10 minutes left in the fourth quarter. Kansas State trying to draw even. And it's a quarterback keeper by Beasley. And he's going to lose a yard. Rocky Kalmus made the tackle along with Corey Callens. Under 10 minutes, undefeated Oklahoma, trying to go to 12-0, trying to win a trip to the FedEx Orange Bowl January 3rd to play for it all. But Kansas State, a team they beat by 10 in the regular season, has given them all they can handle, and then some. And Josh Heifel, despite accounting for three touchdowns, two in the air, one on the ground, has thrown three interceptions, and that's left the door open for the Wildcats. There's a jailbreak there screen. Oh, my goodness. Torrance Marshall again. He's waiting for this one. He's been a heat-seeking missile wearing a red helmet. Here it is here. He's just going to come down to the inside. I'll find Marshall for you in a minute. There he is right here. Look at Marshall. He's looking right at him. He's looking right for him. And he's got him in the crosshairs. Right there. Boom. What a hit. Quincy will remember that one. Maybe that's why we hadn't seen that slip screen all night. <laughs> <laughs> maybe Good Morgan. Reason. Maybe they tried to call it, but Morgan said, no, I don't want to run it. Third and 13 at the 41. Beasley pumps, wants to go long. He's got a man out there looking. Actually, the tight end on this is incomplete. Brandon Clark, one of the backup wide receivers slash tight ends. And now it's fourth and 13. Well, this is an area of the field that, you know, you might go for it. Now he's going to kick it away. Good protection. A lot of time. He'll pump and go. Now that's There's something wrong there. You don't have two guys in the same area. Right. One of the guys needed to go down the middle of the field or stay short. That They're was, not even two yards apart. Yeah, that was uh, something wrong there. A new punter, Jared Bright. This isn't a good kick either. Shanked it. Off the side of his foot, but at least it goes out of bounds yeah. down near the 10-yard line. Not a bad place to shank it when you're kicking inside the 50-yard line. So Oklahoma's got it back at their own 13-yard line when we come back. Twenty-four seventeen, Oklahoma. Eight and a half minutes away from a perfect season, a conference championship and a trip to Miami. But that's a long eight minutes, 31 seconds. Yeah, you got an aggressive, big play defense that you've got to fight, and you got a, a, a punting game that is shaky. Heifel will keep it. And he got about three yards out to the 16-yard line as we check in with John Saunders in New York. John? Time now for the Burger King play of the day from the SEC Championship game. Florida quarterback Rex Grossman, four touchdown passes, including this one, 66 yards to Rache Caldwell, and they're headed to the Sugar Bowl. And they got away with dumping Spurrier there, huh? <laughs> he got the shower. Well, last year, they didn't win the SEC title game. We did it and saw Alabama spank him. They got a little bit back tonight. Heifel hit as he throws, and he somehow got it. Complete to Smith. 
<laughs> That's the game plan all day right there. Josh Heupel, his dad, Ken, is a college football coach, and he's here tonight. And obviously, and look at the look on his face as he's getting ready to talk to Swanee. I, I think he, did, he saw his son get creamed that time. Yep. That's what's, uh, why he's got that frown. Josh's mom said, when I handed him over the fence to his daddy when he was coaching high school ball when he was two years old, I knew I'd never see him off the field again. <laughs> and he's still not off the field, but yep. they sure been knocking him around a little bit tonight. Let's check in with Lynn Swan. Ken. You're watching your son play. What's going through your mind right now? Nerves. <laughs> just nervous for him? Just got to just gotta do it. Just got to do it. Got to move the football, get field position, kick it away, whatever, and let, let the defense play some ball. You know, Bob and I have been watching him play. Seems very like the short. ball's coming out very, very short. I mean, is, is Josh okay? Have yeah, you there's nothing wrong with him. It's just a, it's a game. Cold night. Nerves. It's it's a game, a heck of a game. When he gets a little nervous and he's playing, is that what the tendency is? No, 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 a little no, short. No, 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 no. He's having fun out there right now. Everybody here has the nerves. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's, there's, there's so much on the line: the national championship, possibly a Heisman Trophy. Did you ever dream about these things happening for your son? Latrell stood up. A defensive line just dominating the line of scrimmage. Here they are. Ken, let, let me ask you this. We've seen other games where Josh has taken the pounding like he's taken tonight. Every time he's throwing the ball, he's getting hit. When you talk to him, what does he say about these kinds of games? Nothing at all. That's the name of the game. Mm -hmm. Everybody's going to get hit. Everybody's got to bounce out and play football. Okay. Ken, thank you very much. Thank you. That's a coach talking. Yep. Ferguson to punt. David Allen is back now. Instead of Lockett and Allen, one kick return away from an all-time record and 56 yards short of the NCAA punt return yardage mark. Let's see if he gets a crack at this one. He will, but he's not going to get much. Got about six back near midfield. Didn't get a very good punt to return. It was kind of short. He would much rather have been a 55-yard punt where he could have some running room. Kansas State takes over with great field position. After the short punt, they're almost at midfield. Their own 49, trailing by a touchdown. 6.15 left in the fourth quarter. We say that because this one has all the earmarks are going past four quarters. Gives you that feel. Beasley changes things at the line. And gives it off to Scooby. And Scooby got a little room. Got about five, almost six, before Thatcher and Kalmus brought him down. Kansas State has rushed for 125 yards tonight. Oklahoma only 47. The Wildcats have had four possessions in the second half and have punted all four times. Second down and a long four. Just outside the 46, and boy, the Oklahoma defense isn't giving much up either. And Rocky Kalmus leads the way again. Well, you look inside, you got Kalmus and Marshall, the two linebackers, number 20. Kalmus just gets in there and gets a piece of it. We talked about how good Kansas State defense is. This Oklahoma defense is ranked ninth in the country and second in pass efficiency defense, so they're pretty good do a group too. A Butkus winner looking on. A possible Butkus winner just made the last tackle. Beasley from the gun. John Waits pumps. Look out from behind. Down he goes. Ante Jones tracked him down. What a huge play by the Nickelback. There he is right here. He's just going to come on a little short-sided corner blitz. Does a nice job of getting away from the block of Cartwright and then runs him down. Tries to strip him from it. Big play there. Huge. 
Now the punting game that's been so shaky for Kansas State has Jared Bright again set to kick to J.T. Thatcher. Got a return on. Bright off the side of his foot, but again, it'll do the job because it's going to go out of bounds at about the 17-yard line. Now they'll walk it up now to the 18. Oklahoma's defense does its job. Top-ranked team in the country clinging to a touchdown lead with just over four minutes to play in the Big 12 championship at Arrowhead Stadium in Kansas City. There's the numbers on Josh Heupel. Two touchdowns. He's also run for one. Quentin Griffin is trying to sweep the left side. He got a whole bunch of John McGraw. And he went back Quentin to the play that worked very well for him earlier in the ball game. The little sweep with a fake reverse. A lot of times those plays might work once, but they don't work twice against a good defense. 340 left. What kind of plays do they call here, Bob? Second down and long. You're not going to run very well because they've shut that down all day. So you do what you've done all day, and that is you go to your tight end, Trent Smith, against uh, Cooper. That's worked. Second and nine. That's the matchup right here. Deafening sound with Heifel trying to call signals. He's going to try to call a timeout. The referee will give it to him. The snap came just when he had signaled for the timeout. And so he'll walk over and have a chance to talk things over with the coaching staff. Points are not so much an issue here as making first downs and taking time off the clock. That's exactly right. For the Sooners. Brent Smith right in the thick of that around Mark Mangino, the he's, offensive he's coordinator. He's the go-to guy right now, as far as I'm concerned. College football on ABC Sports brought to you by Dr. Pepper and your local Dr. Pepper bottler. Dr. Pepper makes a world taste better. Chrysler, we're reinventing the passion for driving. 3Com, home, office, or beyond. Simple sets you free. And Morgan Stanley Dean Winter, move your money, get well connected. It looks like going to an old drive-in movie. <laughs> <laughs> and there's the screen, and here we are. <laughs> Sitting in the 57 Chevy with 312 left. Jonathan Beasley has scored on the ground tonight. Has not been particularly effective throwing the ball. Here's Josh Heifel. And his numbers. Well, I think what Oklahoma has to do is make some first downs, and they got to do it through the air. And I think they have to do it getting a ball to their tight end Smith or throwing it to the back, Griffin. Smith sure looked attentive in that huddle, and he's trotting all the way out there to the top of the screen. And that's where Cooper will meet him. Right out here. And Heifel, hurry, will pull it down and run. He's close to a first down, but short. About a football shy. Bob and Brad, recall the uh, Nebraska-Oklahoma football game that we did. Oklahoma in control of the ball game. Still Nebraska having a chance somewhere in there. It was Josh Heifel not throwing the football, but running the football as he did here that kind of iced that game. That's right. And he's not having the best of throwing days this afternoon. And he might just have to do that. Everyone's going to be locked up on someone. The rush is going to come in. If he can slip through, pick up five yards, eight yards, nine yards, get the first down, move the sticks, that's going to be the difference in this drive. You saw Bob Stoops yelling at the officials. He didn't like the way the ball had been re-spotted. They said something back to him. He held his fingers apart. He said, wait a minute, I can, I'll take every inch because you already set it down in one spot. Now you backed it up. With a yard to go on third down, they haven't converted tonight. This one could maybe mean the ball game. They're going to run the clock down and then take a timeout. Third down and about two feet. And as Swanee said, much like the game against 
Nebraska, sometimes you do everything you have to do to win. They don't have to be big plays, but last week against Oklahoma State, the shovel passed to Quentin Griffin when they desperately needed it. And on the final drive, they needed 10. He got 12. They needed two. He ran for four. That's what a quarterback does, and that's what he's trying to do one more time. And you know what? He'll tell you that he's more proud of that series than the rest of them the whole time. You heard it all in that huddle. That's we get this play, we win the game. Yeah, and, and, and that's that's what they're that's what they're thinking. And Looks, then Josh Heupel said, "You got to take it up a notch." That was to his lineman. He does it himself. First down, Oklahoma. Big play right there. They've been shutting that play down defensively all day long, and it seems to me like he went on a quicker count, and the defense may not have been ready. You might have heard Mark Mangino said, go on the quick. This is the quick. Take it on the quick. He said he if it's there, right through there. Yeah, he said if it's there, take it on the quick. So the biggest play maybe of Josh Heupel's season may not have been a pass. Kansas State has three timeouts remaining. Two minutes and 16 seconds. First down, Oklahoma. Here comes a blitz. He's going to keep it again. Heifel's got some room. Got about six more. And now the clock becomes an ally. you got to start stopping the clock for Kansas State. Under two minutes. Yeah. Josh Heifel comes to the sideline again. The undisputed leader of this Oklahoma team. His dad, Ken, looking on. The head coach, Northern State, a Division II school. Not a lot of quarterbacks come out of Aberdeen, South Dakota, but you could tell how much of a coach he is and that he's not going to give in to his son an inch. He's been tough on him all the way along. One time, Josh wanted to take the car out late at night. He said he'd be home at midnight. Didn't make it because of a snowstorm. His dad went out, met him, gave him the shovel, and said, you shovel your way until we can get the car back home. <laughs> so he's been tough on his son. That's the way to be. For Josh Heifel, the Heisman Trophy is not what the season's about. You know, the Heisman Trophy is something, I don't know if they determine it off of one game or an entire season. Uh, it's something I'm not even concerned about, or is anyone on this football team. Uh, we have an opportunity to go out and win the Big 12 championship and put ourselves in a position for a national title. There are a couple of plays away from that. The pitch to Griffin, and Griffin's got a first down, and then some. Oklahoma's got it all the way down to the Kansas State 35. It's a big play by Josh Heifel. Came to the sideline and he reassured Mark Mangino, I'll pitch it before anything happens and I'll make sure it's a good pitch. Let's run the option right there. He got rid of the ball. No shaky toss that time like there was in the first half. The only thing better that Griffin could have done was stayed in bounds. And the oranges are flying out of the stands. 29-yard pickup for the little guy, Quentin Griffin. This is an Oklahoma team that started off the year ranked number 20th in both polls. They went through the dreaded October string of Texas, Kansas State, and Nebraska and became the first team to win back-to-back -back games against number two and then number one on consecutive weeks. And now for the second time, they're trying to beat a Kansas State team that has been feisty and hung with them all night. You know, Bob Stoops has done a, a tremendous turnaround. Two years there. Two years there, his record at the school was um, has been like 18-5. and five. He wins this. It's 19-5. and five. 
You know, it reminds me when I got to the Miami Dolphins, when Don Shula came in 1970, Shula came in and won immediately with somebody else's players, and Stoops has done the same things. He's a very bright, he's very intelligent, he motivates his players. He told them, we're 11-0, but we're burning that. It doesn't mean anything. If we lose this game, we don't have anything. And so they came out well. They practiced well on Tuesday after that. And they came out and decided, we're going to make something of this season. I think emotions have gotten the best of Ken Heupel. Fred, what a feeling. Fred and Bob, you know, when we talked to Coach Snyder, we asked him, was he surprised about Oklahoma's turnaround? And he said, if you were to ask him three years ago whether Oklahoma could turn around with the right man at the helm, he said, I wouldn't be surprised. Yes, I think it can happen. And he said when Bob Stoops became the head coach at Oklahoma, he said he knew he would get the job done because he knew the quality of coach that he was. John Heupel, looking at his son, he knows good things are there. Reminds me of a few years ago when I was in the Rose Bowl looking down on my son Brian winning the Rose Bowl game. Here's an end around for Savage and Savage gets it to the 30 yard line. Let's check in quickly with John Saunders in New York. Brad coming up tomorrow at 3.30 Eastern Time the Tostitos Bowl Championship Series selection show and Terry we started the last week of August we're going to know who's playing for number one. I can't wait. Uh, I might not be able to sleep tonight John. That might not be a good idea in New York. Stick around. <laughs> That'll be 3.30 tomorrow on the Tostitos Bowl Championship Series selection show. Back to you Brad. All right guys we look forward to that for the people that don't like the BCS situation. Look at it this way. It's a lot easier going through the BCS than it is figuring out who the president of the United States is. The process <laughs> works better. I've done four football games and four basketball games since I voted. Well, the next time we all meet, it'll be down in Miami <laughs> at the Orange Bowl. The uh, Orange Bowl people, the committee down there is anxiously awaiting uh, whomever shows up, and they'll do a great job. Our Chevrolet players of the game tonight. Although Josh Heupel was brilliant, he had some misfires, but his tight end came through. Trent Smith and Aaron Lockett, a punt return touchdown, as well as his wide receiver duties in recognition of their efforts. Chevrolet will make a $1,000 contribution to each university's general scholarship fund. You know what? And I think when I think about that, the wide receivers got all the acclaim coming in. They scratched where it is. That's right. Trent Smith was open. Heupel keeps it. Trent Smith was open all night, and that's where they went. I think Josh ended up out of bounds and didn't want to, and Kansas State saying, stop the clock, stop the clock. And he's talking with the linesman about where he went down or if he went out, and they have stopped the clock with 129 left. But Kansas State is going to get the ball back. They have a yard of the play. So Josh Heupel disappointed with the fact that where it was spotted stopped the clock there you go it's a fourth down and our first and ten presented by three com it is fourth down and three and you're going against the special team the only chance that Kansas State's got or one of the best chances is to block this field goal Oklahoma takes a timeout For the first time since 87, Oklahoma still undefeated. But remember the 81 Orange Bowl, Oklahoma and Florida State, Barry Switzer Sooners and Bobby Bowden's Knowles trailing by a touchdown. J.C. Watts led the Sooners down the field with less than a minute to go. And Oklahoma a winner over Florida State, 18-17. And now here in 2000, for the first time since 87, they're undefeated. They're looking for a trip to the Orange Bowl. They went to the Orange Bowl that year in Miami upset the apple cart and took away their national title and ironically enough now Miami I'm sure hey. the Hurricanes cheering right now for the white and purple clad Wildcats to come up with something here in the final minute and 29 seconds Oklahoma has been to the Orange Bowl 16 times but they have not been there in 13 years this is a big risk Kansas State has blocked five kicks this year Duncan from 46 the kick on the way he got it. They took the chance, and from South Dakota to South Beach. Career-long kick for Tim Duncan. What a 
Gutsy call by Bob Stoops. I guess so. In a game that went back and forth with special team blocks and punt returns, knowing that he's had five kicks blocked during the year, he sends in his, his field goal team. And the junior from Clinton, Oklahoma, delivers for his head coach. And Josh Heupel will take it. How about that kick? Oklahoma 27, Kansas State 17. They won by 10 in Manhattan in the regular season. They're up by 10 with 125 left. They it's took tough. over at their own 18-yard line and yeah. took four minutes off the clock. What a great drive. Or rather, 239 off the clock. That's what they needed to do. That's yeah, what you they, talked about. They weren't looking for points, but they got three. They took some time off the clock. Duncan to kick off now. And he'll squib it. Try to keep it out of the dangerous return man's hands. The only problem with that is they let Jason Kazar, one of the up men, take it all the way to the 40-yard line. One nineteen remaining. I want to thank the folks that helped bring you the ball game. John Corl and Charlie Vanacore, our PAs. Pat McGrath, our statistician. Clint Deans, our spotter. Our thanks to Anthony Holman as well. Technical operations managers, Jay Gleason. Our production managers, Michael Heskett. Fred King's our associate director. Our associate producers, Fraven Martin. Technical directors, Brad Sheldon. Games directed by Chip Dean and produced by Jay Rothman. A first down with 119 left. Time running out on Kansas State. Oklahoma in a prevent back there, and Beasley comes up firing incomplete. The coordinating producer of ABC's college football is Bob Goodrich. Our director of production, Bob Toms. The executive producer of ABC's college football is John Filippelli. And the executive producer of ABC Sports is Howard Katz. Rocky Kalmus still on the Butkus list of finalists. His high school team in Jenks, Oklahoma, won their fifth straight 6A title for Alan Trimble, a guy that's put out a lot of football players for Nebraska and Oklahoma over the years. And now it's the Sooners who might be on their way to a national title, or at least a shot at it. They've got Beasley trapped, but he got rid of it. And pickup of about three is Rock Cartwright's drop by Roy Williams. That defense is a good one. It really is, and it's been underrated all year long because of the success of the spread offense, the number of points, and Josh Heupel, the number of points they've put up on the board. Third down at seven. Beasley going to take off with it just to get the first down, and he got more than that. And out to the 42-yard line with the first down. They'll stop the clock to move the chains, but only 38 seconds remain. It's been a special year for Oklahoma whenever you go undefeated, but one of the reasons is they haven't had any injuries. Not one starter or backup has missed a, a game because of uh, injury. They've had everybody play every game. Beasley, deep drop, going deep. He's got a man out there. Great catch. Martez Wesley pulled it down. Pick up a 27. 26 seconds left. If they get this thing in the end zone, we're still going to see an onside kick. That was a great throw by Beasley. He His went best to, of the night. Yeah, no question. And he went to Wesley, who wasn't so uh, well covered. They've been looking for Morgan all night. Let's see if they go to the end zone right here. They can ill afford to have it down before the first down marker because they're out of timeouts. Delayed blitz coming from the secondary. Jones almost got him. Incomplete. Went through Derek Strait's hands. Should've, Again intended for Wesley. Should have been intercepted. And now we're down to 13 seconds. Bob Stoops has been questioned mercilessly about the Oklahoma Sooner Schooner and whether the wheels were set to fall off the wagon the last three weeks. And he said, I don't see too many teams out there that are 11 and 0. There's nobody out there 12 and 0. They're 13 seconds away from it. Oklahoma has won six national titles. Three by Wilkinson and three by Barry Switzer. Beasley wants a throwback to the end zone. He's got a man out there. And it's caught by Morgan. 
touchdown, Kansas State. It's not over. Six seconds, all that's left, though. Morgan just went out and up, out jumped the defensive back. He said, just throw it to me. I think I've been doing that all day. If you just give me the ball. The biggest problem they've got, Bob, is I don't know even if you can have a successful onside kick. It'll take six seconds. I don't think there's much they can do well, except ball, make this no. more respectable. The clock doesn't start until the ball is touched on the kick. So they'd need a great kick, and then they'd need to put it on the leg of their yeah. Rosa Award candidate. So we've got a play or two left. Rose out to the right and throws back. you just throwing this up. You, that ball should not... Oh, Morgan just out jumps uh, straight. That's uh, straight number two. And Quincy Morgan, a big play receiver. There's got to be, and I know from personal experience, a little frustration inside that young man because you see there, he can go up in the crowd and get the ball. And what he was probably looking for all day long in the midst of all the great coverage by the Oklahoma defense was just a chance to do that, go up and get the ball, but he never had it. They both have great vertical jumps, but one guy's three inches taller, and it showed on that play. And the hands team will come out for Oklahoma with six seconds remaining. Well, you, what, what you've got, you've got an onside kick that the ball, the clock doesn't start until it's touched. And then you've got to, then, then you've got to get a field goal, or you might, you'll have one play if you get it. If Kansas State gets it, then you've got one play. And it won't be in position enough to kick a field goal. No, You'd have to throw the ball it. down the field. So unless they try a bit of a line drive instead of a total onside, it's just not going to travel far enough, even if they recover, to give them a crack. They'd have to have one play and try to throw it a mile. So all the receivers are up there within 10 yards of the ball for Oklahoma. You know, Oklahoma has everybody up within 10 yards. They got nobody back right. If they pop that ball. They'll go to the left, and Damian Mackey's got it. That's it. And that's it. The Sooners survive another one. And Josh Heupel, despite the fact he had some misfires and three interceptions, has led his team to its 12th victory of the season in one more snap he's a complete quarterback and he and he beat him in a lot of different ways and now the chance for the Sooners of war number one and nobody else can make the claim they've got well they beat all the teams all the tough teams all the right teams in the big 12 during the season and now they come back and they they won the championship game the Sooners are going to Miami Some of the players Bob Stoops coached or recruited at Kansas State. He's congratulating. You saw Fadafei and Heifel embrace. And now Coach Snyder making his way through the traffic as his team put on a gutsy performance and came up just a little bit short. I appreciate it. 